Hello everyone and welcome back to the Trails from Zero Challenge Run, the live stream series where we're trying to beat this amazing RPG on Nightmare Mode without ever changing our starting gear. Now if you find, want to watch these challenge runs on your own time, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and boot that bell button to stay notified. Now, we previously left off, we of course defeated Garcia over here. And I brought a guess that we're probably just before the final boss simply because I've walked into this room and it seems like it's very imposing and like we're at the center of darkness here, so to speak. So I definitely get the feeling that we're probably right up against the final boss. So in order to prepare for that, there's a couple of things we need to do. First, we need to get everyone's CP back to full so that we have all of our options available. If I haven't already, I need to make sure to switch TO's um, S craft to. Yep, okay, TO has the, the guard S craft, so that's good. Beyond that, I need to also get, we also need to do some cooking to get some more consumable items, so specifically, I believe we are low on, let's see, or I think we'll be okay with steaks. We have 17, so that's not bad. But I think like us, I think we might be running a bit low on burgers again. Uh, yep, we want some, definitely want some more burgers. Hello, Jay. Thanks for dropping by. How's it going? The boss hallways. The longer the hallway, the longer the boss. Oh, no! 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 I mean, it's... That's, very, that's a very true statement, but also... Oh, no. Are we going to be in for, like, another five-part final boss like we had in Trails of Cold Steel 2? I doubt it. I doubt it would be, like, a five-part final boss. Maybe a two-part. But, like, five? That might be a bit much. Alright, so, what I'm thinking... We're doing on reflect liquids. Um, I know it's here somewhere. Seven, not bad. Okay. Basically, we don't we don't exactly know what the f we know that Doctor Gunter is going to be involved somehow. We just don't know how or in what context. So, but before we do any of that, obviously, first things first, let's get our let's get our CP back to full. All right. Need some space. Keep my space. <laughs> Alrighty. I am very excited for this finale, though, chat, because this has been a really, really, really fun game. The, the story's been excellent. The characters are great, and all in all, I feel like the combat system's been handled fairly well in this game, even with uh, some of the more com uh, complex um, portions of it. You know what, curious how many enemies are gonna be in the fight based on how combat seems to favor multiple targets. That is a fair that is a fair question. Though to be fair, Jay, just last stream, I'll mention that the fight against Garcia was literally a Garcia by himself, and it was still very, very challenging. We just had managed to come out on top because Garcia happened to be one of the few bosses recently that actually could be affected by AT delay tactics. I'm just gonna assume that whether we're fighting Dr. Dr. directly or anything that he creates or summons, I'm just gonna assume it's gonna be immune to everything. That'd be my guess. Or maybe it'll be immune to nothing and let us really test our skills for the entire time? I doubt it, but you never know. It's always a possibility. Um, in terms of like this combat system favoring multiple targets, it can... I mean, I could see it happening, because sometimes I've seen, uh... I've, I've heard that, like, Nightmare Mode might change the amount of enemies you face. Like, the reason why every time we go to face, like, a giant monster for a contract, we always face multiple of them is because of Nightmare Mode. Like, I think on easier difficulties, it's just, like, one at a time as opposed to two. Or sometimes three in, in, in the later parts of the game. <laughs> well, whether it's, it's one or nine, we're gonna be ready. Right, everyone? Right. 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 We're gonna try our best! Come on, Dio. The problem, I don't want to accidentally delete everything. Alright, there we go. Has there been anything that someone's invincible minions as an obstacle? Oh, you know, there hasn't. Though, to be fair, I don't see how that would be much of an obstacle considering that 
like a lot of the attacks are we have we're capable of using are either ranged attacks or spells that can cast from either the long distance or from any range. But I, I will say this, Jay. In Trails of Cold Steel uh, 2, at least, there were some boss enemy, like there were some bosses that would actually use like landmines or like explosive arrows that would detonate if you step too close. Or maybe they were on a timer. So there are situations like that. So it could be something like that. Maybe they put, maybe Dr. Dumpster throws down some kind of trap that's like unique to his fight. That could very well be the case. But uh, generally speaking, they've act I've actually seen uh, Nihon Falcon be pretty creative with what they do with some of the unique bosses here. I mean, even in this game, I, I think of... Um, I think of uh, Ritzia as an excellent boss battle just because she would actually duplicate herself. So it's like when you're starting the battle, it's like, okay, this is a 1v4. Yeah, she has some strong attacks, but otherwise it's not too bad. Then she duplicates herself and you're like, oh no. <laughs> then, then it becomes chaos. <laughs> because having like duplicates of yourself that can do the same stuff that you can do, that just makes it a way, way harder. So, I'll be curious to see what, like, unique thing they do for Dr. Gunter. Let's see, I think... Let's try an aerial. Let's try a shadow blade. Let's try a dark man. Thunder Cyclone. That's it on Ellie. Ellie deletes. As we go searching for more, more enemies. Yeah, play by dance with this kind of active movement and turn-based combat, but all the possible variety seems fascinating. I agree, Jay. It is fascinating. I mean, interestingly enough, I think this combat system is kind of a hybrid between Persona 5's combat system. Well, I mean, the kind of combat systems you see in games like Persona 5, where it's just you versus the enemies, and a true, like, map-wide uh, tabletop setting like you'd see in a game like Shine Force. <laughs> All right. All right, there we go. But, but yeah, as I was saying, like, like this, th these types of encounters are much more common for a game like Fire Emblem, where like you have like a massive map to play around with. So I find it's it's an interesting hybrid between that and a much more character driven us versus the enemy on a flat plane, so to speak. You've heard Final, uh, well, it's Final Fantasy in the description, and that's a good way to put it, because that's basically like it's a hybrid between two very different systems of RPG combat. So, the, the Final Fantasy kind of RPG system of combat is the dungeon crawling RPG system, very much like Earthbound in a sense, where like, you don't have, like, positioning does not really matter, it's all about just how you how you micromanage your party while the enemy you know tries to attack you and things like that whereas at in games like fire emblem yes you have to manage your your army so to speak but you also have to take into account the field itself and different advantages that come with that here it's a bit of a hybrid where there isn't really like necessarily an advantage in most cases to being in this particular um what's it called like, there's like no land effect, so it's not like if I walk on a space I suddenly get 30% damage resistance like in a damn like Fire Emblem. But, at the same time, because there is positioning, it means there's opportunity to like move out of the way of a spell that's being cast, or, in some cases, move your characters into a position where they can hit multiple enemies when previously they can only hit one. As well as tactics involving positioning yourselves in ways so that an enemy's area of effects attacks to don't hit all your party members. So, lots of tactics to be had here. Also, just the idea of the tactics menu. All very interesting. No worries, Topper Nicholson. Welcome, welcome. Right now, we're just in the preparatory phase for the final boss. So, now! Okay, we survived. Add it up. And that's more XP first down. Alright. TL, heal us. Alright, I'll get on it. It's not like I sweat, slept in four days or whatever. Nope. 
Anyway, I, I'm very eager to share my thoughts about Trails from Zero once, uh, assuming we can beat the game. But to give you guys kind of um, a preview of what I thought about this game so far, I've really, 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 really liked it a lot. Like, I, I'd say I like this game even more than Trails of Cold Steel 1. Though, it, like, comparing it to Trails of Cold Steel 2, I still think... I still think that Trails of Cold Steel 2 is my favorite just because... It does a lot of the stuff this game does, but, like, it spans upon it. But at the same time, I also have to recognize that I don't think comparing this game to Trails of Cold Steel 2 is necessarily the fairest comparison in the world, just because this game it literally has to establish its characters, whereas Trails of Cold Steel 2 already had Trails of Cold Steel 1's lore and, and characters to build off of. So, I would say, of the... Like, right now, this is my second favorite Trails game that I've played, because I've only played three, that being Trails of Cold Steel 1, Trails of Cold Steel 2, and now Trails from Zero. But, if I were just rate it uh, based off of, like, first games in a C series of games in the Trails series, then this would be my favorite uh, first game, and then Trails of Cold Steel would be second. Now, anyway. Uh oh, that's a crit. No! No! Oh, wait, wait, I didn't even realize that, um... Oh, that was a horrible mistake. Why did I do that? Why did I do that? I, don't know. I, I forgot that, uh, Lloyd's special actually uh, recovers CP. I need to remember that. So that could really help expedite this process. Okay. Well, have fun watching cartoons, Captain Nicholson. Let's see here. Well, no, the, the, the notification was sound. This for Captain Nicholson. It was just an at here notification, which means if you weren't locked on, you wouldn't have seen it, or you wouldn't have been pained by it. But but if you were locked in, you would have seen it. It's there. Anyway, back to what we were doing. Let's go for Ariel. Shadow Blade. And right there. Oh wow, I have leveled up. How about that? And Celestial Bomb too. <laughs> Get to staying better and better. Yes, I had a cell. Glad to see we're still able to earn a fan out of that speed. Now! Alright, let's 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 backtrack. Let's see if we can do the whole loop de loop. Respawn on the enemy's trick. Uh no we can't. I was hoping to just get into an area where we should like go back and forth between two maps and just get a bunch of enemies. Uh to repeatedly defeat, but that doesn't seem to be the case here. Maybe if we go, like, here, they'll respawn? There's so many! Oh, there's this many. That means we just need to knock them down. Alright. Let's go with the galleons, are. There we go. So, I I'm curious, chat. Um, for those of you who have seen Malt... Oh, hold on. Looks like we have a... We have a visitor tonight. Give me one second. Allow me to... Uh, put that up. Do, do, do. Yeah, it has been a while. So, what's the situation here? Are we... 
I'm not going to have to prepare, prepare the airship again. Oh, no, Toe, I don't think we need the airship right now. In fact, I think this is before you even became captain of the airship, so... Oh, you're all good. You can keep learning what you need to learn at Thor's Military Academy. Don't worry, your arc will come. All right. So, for those who don't know, Toa Herschel is my favorite character of Trails, from Trails of Cold Steel 1. And there are many reasons for this. Yes, she's a, a very good representation of what it means to be a young leader. She's he's very sweet and wholesome. She is the person I ship ring with the hardest. And of course, of course she, uh, she's actually quite capable in combat as well. I mean, the one time that she was in, required for the story prior to the final dungeon of Trails of Cold Steel 2, she had like a unique like status effect that could be inflicted that increased the damage to Arc Steel. Yep, that status effect was called Weech. It's it's really useful for characters that are very, very capable of casting spells. I mean, I've, I've actually seen some footage pitch of alternate timelines where someone hadn't used my weak status effect in order her to set up, up a one-shot kill for the final boss, possibly with, with, with the power of the spell casting of Edmund Veilstein. Oh, I see, that makes sense. Yeah, Emma's a really, really strong spellcaster in Trails of Cold Steel 1 too. She does like a ludicrous amounts of damage with um with all the various arts. Mm-hmm. I'll also mention uh Toa. Uh, uh, there is uh there is someone who fits your character archetype in this game. Oh really? Who's that? Why, it's actually this person right here. Her name is Ellie. She is also very wholesome. Um, but she she has no problem being there on the front lines. That's the thing. Oh, well, that's interesting. <laughs> also, we have the exercise challenge being that, so give me one second to put that on the board. Let's see here. That challenge. Well, I mean, it's important to stay healthy, isn't it? It is indeed, Toa. So every time we get defeated in battle, we have to do 10 push ups. Hm. Well, better make sure your tactics are on point then, Atomics. Will do, Toa. Will do. Also, fun facts for those who might be newer to the streams. Uh, when, we, when we did a challenge run of the Dark Souls 1, the character we created was actually meant to be an ancestor to Toa Herschel. Her name was Toba Warshall, and she was the uh, firekeeper who had to basically use uh, every weapon class in the game in order to defeat a boss. That was called the Weapon Lock Challenge Run, and it was a lot of fun because it allowed me to actually see uh, experience using some weapon classes that I never would have otherwise used. That was a very, very fascinating experience. Oh, and on the topic of characters... Oh, what's th what's this about characters? Are you going to talk talk about what I think you're going to talk about, Antonics? Well, that depends, Toa, where you think I was going to talk about how it's when a Trails of Cold Steel 3 challenge run was going to occur. Mm -hmm. Yes, actually, that's exactly what I thought. Well, that's not it. I'm sure it'll happen eventually, Toa. It's just not going to be in the near future. Aww. But, but don't worry, Toa, I was going to talk about something else related to Trails, or sort of tangentially related to Trails. So, I've had, um... I've been having a lot of fun recently trying to write a new potential Dungeons & Dragons character for a a d and campaign if it were set in the Star Wars universe. Now, some of you probably have heard me talk about on streams about potentially making a uh, how about how interesting it would be to make the Dungeons and Dragons character based around like s either being a long-range sniper or a marksman, with with the premise being that oh dear now with the premise being that the character is really good at distance and does high crit uh, high critical hit damage, but the drawback being that in close quarters they're not very capable. Well. I have started the process of 
Uh, we need uh, some healing. Anyway, I saw the process of actually writing that character. And fun fact, that character... I, I often, when I'm writing characters... I write down, like, if there are any, like, sp particular characters that they might be inspired by or based off of. And you guys want to guess uh, which character from the Trails game this new sniper character is at least partially inspired by? Hmm. Is it me? Um, so I, I know that, that would have been a good death star, but no, it's not you. Oh, wow, I'm actually kind of surprised. Okay, then. Hmm. What, what do you all think, chat? Who from the Trail series when Atomic's based a sniper character author? Millie! No! 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 Not Millie! I'm not Alpha! Not Sarah! I feel like you're picking those characters because you know I would never do that. No, it's not Pro. Let's see here. Stay with that. Well, we survived, and thankfully, because of Lloyd's help, we actually got a lot of CP back. Alright, so... That one NPC... Which NPC would that be, Topper Nicholson? Uh... No, I don't. <laughs> like... It's not coming to mind here. Green. What green NPC? Let's see, a, a green NPC? Hmm. There's a. He's got green hair in this game. I mean, I know. Who am I remembering? I know Kia has green hair, but like, like Kia is one of my favorite characters on this game. We must protect you at all costs! So, let's see, what other green, green hair characters are there? Uh, Machias? No, no. Not Machias. Um. No! We must protect Tia! Must protect! Tia is, is a precious gift to, gift to uh, this world, and she must be protected at all costs. Hm. I've seen, I've seen the, the intel about Tia. She is adorable, by the way. It's a shame that, that's, that she wants to be harmed by so many people. I know, right, Tella? It's just, it's just wrong. She's, just let her be a, just let her grow up and be, have a normal life, you know? Don't ha have her be involved in all like this. The crazy stuff that Dr. Gunter's trying to trying to pull. Alright. Now. Alright, Copper Nicholson, I'm gonna ask you to stop that line of thought. We must protect Kia. That's right, we must protect Kia. But what we, but th these beholders, on the other hand, these beholders are evil. Evil. I, I, actually, that's all that. But regardless, let's see. We need a stealth to do that. We have some eye damage, and let's do dark mare. There we go. Hmm. All right, that, now, chat. I was going to ask you, what what have been your thoughts about Trails from Zero so far? Do you think uh, what have you thought of the story so far? What do you thought of the characters? How do you think it compares to Trails of Cold Steel One and Two? Because like I was saying earlier, I think this is my second favorite Trails game of the three that I've played so far. But Trails of Cold Steel Two is probably still my favorite. Alright, you're right now. Sounds good, Jay. Thank you so much for dropping by, and hope you have a good rest of your day. <laughs> Fair enough. Thanks for the well wishes. 
And if all goes well, we'll have to do zero push-ups, but I'm not, I mean, the final bosses of Trails games tend to be pretty tough, so we'll probably have to do at least a couple of push-ups. Hopefully it's not too many. Let's see here. Well, I mean, a story like this requires a, a lot of uh, attention to be paid, Copper Nicholson, so if it's not if it's not your cup of tea, that's perfectly understandable. I know Trails games aren't for everyone, but me personally, I've, I've really, really enjoyed this story. We have our... We have our heroes. They're all just trying to make their way in the world, and they're trying to survive in this... Uh, trying to... Have made everything a better place when everything around them is steeped in corruption. It's a really, really, really fascinating story. Let's go with that. All right. Nice job to you. Now let's let's see if we can't get some more. Uh, we, Tio just needs like the tiniest smidgen more of XP, and then we'll be good to go. Hmm. It sounds to it sounds to me like Hopper Nicholson him likes to be a contrarian. Oh, a contrarian. What do you mean by that, uh, Toa? I mean whatever he's saying right now about the story. He means the opposite. Oh, I see. Hmm. My guess has is because Hus Trails from Zero has has it has a character that's very similar to Milliam, um Hopper Nicholson would probably like that. That's a fair point, Toa. I'm guessing you, you remember Ren Copper Nicholson. Basically, this name's Milliam. <laughs> the Milliam, but with a larger robot. Okay, let's go with regular tux. Yes, Copper Nicholson, that was pointed out in previous streams. The fact that you don't remember it uh, tells me that you really aren't paying that closely attention to what's going on, dude. Like, I've been pointing out constantly that this game, uh, that a lot of characters in Trails of Cold Steel were clearly inspired by characters from this game because there were similar archetypes, and one of those archetypes was Milliam. <laughs> like, because, uh, the character of Ren, let, let's see if I can find um, her in the descriptions here. Give me one second. Do I have, like, a character list somewhere? Um... Yep, this is actually kind of interesting. I'm realizing I'm not seeing a character list. Also, what? Why is there a question mark? That's ominous. Oh, right, there's probably the, the fifth stratum. Okay, so I don't see a characters list anywhere here. Which, I guess that must have been something they add in Trails of Cold Steel. But yeah, the character Ren is very much meant to be the million of this game. She literally says, like, um... So the thing about uh, Ren that makes her so in um... So interesting is that unlike Milliam, Ren's actually a member of Ouroboros, and she has like the power levels to to match with that. So she's like Milliam if Milliam was a much much more capable and saw everything as a um, as like a joke or basically playing uh, an opportunity to play because to her everything just is so trivial. So like she was asking if when when we fought those warhounds in the first chapter that gave us a really really hard time. Ren was, Ren basically said, oh, so were you just playing hide and seek with those dogs or something like that? <laughs> because to Ren, they weren't that big of a threat. Well, I mean, that's basically, um, that's basically the, um, uh, what, what Lloyd's, um, I guess the, the character that became almost like a sister figure to, to uh, like a big sister to Lloyd, the, the one, why am I forgetting her name? The character who's a nurse, Cecile, that's, that's it. 
Like, I think Cecile and Ilya Platera are the ones making those kinds of time than Scott Nicholson. Especially Ilya. Ilya is just... <laughs> but anyway. So, everyone's CP is all good. You know what that means, chat. There's a couple of things left to do. We have to do some cooking. And then, when all the cooking is completed, then we will be prepared to, to finish, to hopefully finish uh, uh, this finale. All right, so in terms of what we need, I think we're doing pretty well in states, but we'll make a couple more just to be safe. Yeah, I'm ready. Let's try here. Hey, there's one. We want more, more of the main stakes. Come on, Randy, you got this. No. Come on. We can do this. So, for those who are wondering what, what I'm doing, oh, I'm not wondering what you're doing, Atomics. Oh, I know you aren't Toa, because we have to do this all the time in Trolls of Old 2 1 and 2. Yep! Gotta make them hate the good consumable items. Because, as they offer all the best staff buffs as quickly as possible. Exactly, Toa. <laughs> if we have learned anything from, from the Trails games, it is that cooking is one of the most, the most powerful skills you can have on the battlefield. <laughs> Just being able to cook really, really, really good dishes makes all the difference in the world. And that has absolutely been the case in this game, because especially since Chrono Burst doesn't exist in this game, cooking really high tier consumable items has been a necessity. Because they're effectively taking the place of, um, of casting spells that would accomplish something similar, but would take way too long to, to accomplish. So, come on, Randy, one more Elden Stake. Now! We just need one more elegant state. My dude, you got this. You got this! You can do it. I believe. I believe. Oh, come on, I just want one more really good stake. Is that so much to ask? Maybe Randy should raise the stakes. <laughs> good pun, Toa. Good pun. Thanks, Antonics. There we go. Okay, now for the most important consumable item to, to cook. And that, of course, is our king burgers. Because as we all know, hamburgers are amazing. But we need the, the most amazing hamburgers. Yes, good job, Randy. Because these are the items that, before, that restore CP ludicrously fast. Like, 95 CP in one turn is ridiculous. And I mean that in the best way possible. Like, 95 CP in one turn is almost enough to cast an S-Craft again. So there's a lot that can be done with recovering that much CP in one turn. That plus I over a decent amount of, of, of HP as well. Not a lot, but, you know, 40% and, of, of that's HP definitely is still a fair amount. Especially with when our characters are ha have anywhere from, like, 2,500 to 4,000 HP. That, that definitely adds up. Now, come on, Randy. I'm my best in Thomas. Come on. Yes! Good. So, basically now, chat, we have to get all of our cooking in order. Yes, if we're going to be facing the final boss, there's a good chance that they'll have a, a ludicrous amount of health. 
And if that's the case, then we need to make sure that Estelle and Joshua are ready to do their their combo craft as, as, as frequently as possible. Which means we need the best CP restoring items. I definitely want at least 20 of these burgers, if not more, just to, because, again, we don't know how long this fight could be. Or if it's going to be multiple fights, because it very well could be. It might be a situation where, I don't know, maybe we fight Dr. Gunter at first, and then he creates some kind of monster or something and transforms himself into a demon, since, I mean, Ernest to transform himself into a demon, so I wouldn't put it past Dr. Gunter to not be able to do that. Like, that's just like we face Dr. Gunter, like, as a human first, and then he turns into a demon. Oh, actually, that might be a clever way to do it. So that way, it's like in the first phase, we're facing the human side of him, where we have to show what we've learned about fighting uh, human-based enemies, and then he turns into a demon, and we have to show what we learned about fighting, like, larger monsters. That'd be, a, that'd be an interesting way to make it a final boss, at least for from a game design perspective. Well, regardless, we'll see. We will see. I'm also curious to see what the, um... Like I was commenting on, on, like, a stream or two ago, I'm curious to see if there's going to be some... Like, justification for what the... For what D34 Chi is doing. Because, obviously, what they're doing is horribly more... Is horribly wrong on many different hint levels. But I almost wonder if my theory about the Septian Church is going to be correct, and that perhaps the Septian Church is going to end up being an even more insidious threat than D-Therefore-G. Yeah, you know, not entirely sure yet, but it's something that's on my mind, because... D-Therefore-G seems to be very much opposed to Adios and the idea of... Like, angels and... and goddesses and things like that. Because... Obviously, everything that Dr. Gunther seems to be doing is based around, like, demonology and things like that. So it makes me wonder if, like, we're gonna fight demons in this game and then, like, angels in the next game. So, so who's the, the bad guy of this game? So, the main antagonist of this game, Copper Nicholson, is Dr. Gunther, who we're trying to face now. So, do what Dr. Gunther is, is he's... He was a member of the D, therefore, G cult. And basically, he did all sorts of, like, corrupt, twisted experiments that involved lots of people dying in order to give people, uh, uh, to give people special powers. So that's why Tio has her super hearing, for example. But... What's also, um... Dr. Gunther Copper Nicholson. We see him a couple of times in the game. So, the, the interesting thing is, this game has been very much about, well, I mean, it's very much about how to handle a situation where you're trying to do good when everything around you is so steeped in corruption, but it's also a story about trying to live up to someone you, someone you look up to. So in this case, Lloyd has been wanting to live up to the image of Guy, his, his, his big brother, who passed, who supposedly anyway passed away, uh, as a result of going after the D therefore G cult. And my guess is Dr. Gunter either is the one responsible for getting, um, for, uh, getting rid of Guy, or at least had some role to play in it, which would kind of bring everything full circle, so to speak. That's my current guess, anyway. What I think would be really twisted is if somehow Dr. Gunter, like, had guy's body somewhere and reanimated it just to really get under Lloyd's skin. Like, I think that would be really, 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 really be brutal if that's what ends up happening. But, regardless, the, um, Dr. Gunter seems to very much want to use Kia for some very, for some dark and nefarious purpose. I, either it's like some kind of summoning ritual, or I don't know, but just 
or a slight like, super experiment or something like that. Like, whatever it is, Tia seems to be the key to, to everything. So, now we don't have the firm burger. So, let's see here. So, right now, we're trying to stop Dr. Gunter because... Because Dr. Gunter seems to be trying to bring the d 4 g cults back. And that would be very dangerous for... Not just cross but all across the land. Yes, D therefore G would ab would abduct people, conduct experiments on them. Let's see here. We need more burgers. Need more hamburgers. There we go, there's another one. Okay, how are we doing on popcorn? Not bad. Let's give Tio the orphan for this. We give Ellie the this. You got this, Ellie. Made that secrecy popcorn. There you go. Good job, Ellie. <laughs> yeah, good job, Ellie. Oh, well, thanks, everyone. Let's see here. Yeah, like I was saying earlier, I'll be very curious to see if the D therefore G cult was actually combating a much bigger threat in the form of the Septian Church. So, we'll, we'll see. Like, I get the feeling that, like Trails of Cult Steel 1, they're probably going to end this game on some kind of cliffhanger, or at least give us an inkling of what the second game's going to be about. Because both of the events we saw from a distance about Crossbell and Trails of Cold Steel like the end of Trails of Cold Steel 1 and Trails of Cold Steel 2, like the, the giant energy dome and then the, the massive tree. That hasn't happened. Like, we're actually uh, too early in the timeline for that stuff to have happened at this point in the game. We're like right at the end, so that's got me really curious as to what happens in the second game. Come on. Man, Ellie's on a roll tonight. That's three secrecy popcorns in a row. Good job, Ellie. <laughs> Thanks, Antonix. All right. Let's see if we can get one more alley. I'll try my best. Oh, it's just like popcorn. It's all right. You were doing well. Hmm. Now. Come on. Yes. Okay. This thing should be a, dip, uh, a decent amount to start with, at least. I don't think Kia did super power shop for Nicholson. I don't even know what Kia's big purpose in this grand design is. All that we know is that she's the key to something. What that something is, we have no idea. Now we've done that, let's switch around Ellie's Orbments, give Ellie Evade 3. No, Copper Nicholson, I was saying that D therefore G would, would uh, cause a lot of people to die in order to give people superpowers. So like very much like demonology, necromancy, things like that. I mean, literally, you've seen the uh, Dr. Gunter. He's just one guy. He's like, he's like, ended up possessing a bunch of people. 
all across Crossbell, turning them into basically zombies. It's very, very dark stuff. But anyway, um, there is one more recipe I want to make sure we have at least a fair amount of stuff for, and that is actually the I think it's the the sincere lunchbox. So restoring eighty percent HP and curing all elements is actually a really, really, really strong thing. So, Lloyd. Let's give Lloyd the effort quartz. So that way he has a better chance of, of doing this. And let's continue here. Actually, how are we doing with flat liquids? I think, um... Did I do prankster? I mean, we could also do it Lloyd Prankster to try and get some, some reflect liquids, but for now, we need some some, some uh, Mother's Lunchboxes, because those will give us a really, really powerful amount of HP uh, heal, as well as curing all ailments, so it's like, it's both, it's basically like a full, it's almost a full restore if we're talking Pokemon terms. Now, Brad, it is an expensive recipe, but I think it's worth it in this case, because We've had a number of situations where someone's like really low on health and flips with a bunch of status effects. And this could definitely help with that. Potentially. Come on, Lloyd. No. Like, I do genuinely wonder, like, why is it the Mother's Lunchbox? Well, that was not the Lunchbox. Well, why is it the Why is the Sincere Lunchbox the only thing seemingly that Lloyd's good at? I mean, unless it's, unless I just happen to have gotten unlucky with the other two couple of recipes, and those are ones that Lloyd's are also good at. But so, like, seriously, like, like everyone else in Lloyd's part already is like seems to be pretty good at a bunch of different recipes. But Lloyd's just this is this is the one recipe he can do. What's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is Lloyd needs to learn how to cook more. More food. I I agree, Tella. I agree. Now. Yeah, this Lloyd. And what do you say? So unlucky. Come on, Lloyd. You can do it. We want those supreme lunch boxes. I wonder if this is the recipe that Monica would have given us in Trails of Cold Steel 2 if um if we had actually managed to give her all the food she was asking for, because she mentioned how she really wanted to make a lunch a lunch box. Granted, it would not have been nearly as necessary in Trails of Cold Steel 2 just because the Chrono Burst exists. So as long as we had like a ton of EP restoring items, we'd be mostly fine. Your game, unlucky. How many times in a row is this at this point? Come on, Lloyd. No! Like, I've given Lloyd the quartz for this. We just are getting supremely unlucky. Hmm. No! So yeah, uh, something else I'll mention, chat, is I'm very much looking forward to the Portal Stories Mel Challenge run. 
it'll definitely be a bit different uh, going for more of a, a, a challenge or more of a puzzle game. But, I mean, it's been a very long time since I played a portable game, so should be a lot of fun. Especially since I've heard very good things about it. Hmm. Hey, there we go, finally! We finally got one. Come on, bud. No. That's supposed to be like a really low percentage to, to cut this recipe. I see you're hiding out, Copper Nicholson. Have a rest of your night. Hmm. Let's see here. As we continue to cut the materials we need for the final boss. Hey, there we go. I looked at at least ten just to I didn't have some some backup I, some backup plans. Hmm. Come on. You have to slide. That's more like it. Hmm. Chat, am I also... Am I the only one who finds it just a little bit uh, funny that they found, like, an excuse to essentially have the shops down here in the final dungeon with, um... By essentially having, like, some of the people who were taken just so happen to be shopkeepers and, like, an orbital engineer. I do find that kind of funny. I mean, from a game design perspective, it is very convenient. I just find it kind of funny because it's like, yeah, that's that's very convenient. Like, I remember even in Trails of Cold Steel, like, I'm pretty sure they didn't have shops in that final dungeon. Well, I, I should clarify. In the final dungeon of the story, not the final dungeon of the game that takes place in the old schoolhouse. I'm more so referring to the final dungeon, like, that involves like Crow and, and the finale there. Like that final dungeon, the giant fire castle, I don't think had like shops. I mean, granted, we had the the red lightsabers for creating orbments, but I'm, I'm pretty sure there wasn't like a equipment shop or anything like that. Or if there were, I'm just misremembering. Maybe Sarah fulfilled that role, I just am not remembering correctly. Either way. I'm doing fairly well. Let's see. Yes! Alright, there we go, finally! Now, I do think it would be beneficial to create some Reflex Liquid. And after that, we'll go see what this final boss is all about. Uh, replace Effort with... The... Yep, Prankster, because that increases the chances of cooking a peculiar dish. And interestingly enough, the developers have very specifically made this recipe... Um one that no one's really bad at making so it to make it harder to make that reflect liquid because having the ability to 
in one turn set up Art Reflex is very, very strong. At least for the way this game is balanced. Nice light. You're doing great. Come on. Now. There we go. slide. No. Okay. We will finish all the cooking. Yes. Nicely done, Lloyd. Nicely done. I'd say maybe two or, or maybe two more. Well, that's a cautionary fail. Oh yeah, I, I, I forgot. So the character... Oh wait, no, I didn't forget. I mentioned that the, the character I'm making for... The Dungeons Dragons character I'm making, that's the sniper, is actually based off of the Stell. Yep, I think you mentioned that, Thomas, though. I, I can't remember either. It's been, been a little bit. Fair enough, Toa. Nicely done, Lloyd. Nope. Yeah, I do find it interesting that the way the, the cooking uh, system is balanced in this game, there are situations, well, I mean, just in general, there are situations where the peculiar dish is actually good. Just depends on what the effects of the peculiar dish are. Alright. Pump that up for something vain. Alrighty, chat. I think we're ready. We have. We have done a lot of cooking. We have all of our hopes and dreams. And we have tons of consumable items. Yep, we have consumable items due to all the cooking we've done. We've all got Matt's CP. Garcia's defeated. Let's see if we can do this. I think uh, we'll take a short break, and when we come back, chat, we're going to try and face the final boss. Hopefully. So, don't worry, guys. I will be right back.
chat. Welcome back, Antonitz. Thanks, fella. <laughs> we are back. So, we uh, we got all our we got our food cuts. We have have all our hopes and dreams. We are going to try and face whatever's down this deep to dark dungeon as best we can. <laughs> Ready, everyone? Ready. 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 All right, let's do this. Leroy Jenkins. Okay, <laughs> that was a long hallway. Oh, it got quiet. Oh dear. I think this might be a chat. Let's see, which one was today? It's getting quiet! <laughs> it's remarkably calm in here. It's too calm. Uh-oh. That looks like a ritual circle if I've ever seen one! Mm -mm. Oh no. What is this place? An underground lake? It looks like this room just keeps bigger and getting bigger and bigger. Everyone, over there! What on earth is that? Ah! <laughs> uh... Oh no! That's the thing we saw the photo of, of Kia in. Now we finally know where that photo was taken. I think I remember a big, dark place. There's a light above me. It's pretty, but a little scary. She was trying to describe this place, wasn't she? <laughs> Indeed she was! Shokun Gunter. When did you show up? Just from a glance, I, I can tell it's as normal. <laughs> that was menacing. <laughs> Welcome. It is my honor to entertain such illustrious guests, ladies and gentlemen, for the special sports section, as well as the two rising stars of the Bracer Guild. Allow me to welcome you to the holy ground of our origin, <laughs> to my master plan. <laughs> uh, Tarn you. You look very calm and saying you're about to kick your butt. <sighs> Showed him, Gunter. I'm not cut to the chase. Release everyone who's been brainwashed by Gnosis. Now. We may not know how you're doing it, but we're positive you're the one behind all this. Sure, I'd be happy to. What? I told you my turn's at IBC, didn't I? Head over Lady Kia, and everything will come to an end. No! <laughs> <laughs> Enough with that! We'd never had her over. Looking for a fight? You truly are the sickest individual to have ever existed! <laughs> what? Do you know? How is that? How is that? A, how is that a funny line? Mm, maybe it's have a unique sense of humor in silence. I mean, I guess that could be the, the case, but also just. Whether it's Tia, whether it's Fi, just. Is the right amount of sarcasm. <laughs> This guy's got the same twisted personality as the professor. Yeah, but even Weissman wasn't this insane. I hope that wasn't a spoiler. Oh, what a shame. You're making this conversation harder than it needs to be. Lady Kia has always been our divine child, the center of our humble organization. It is so unreasonable. Is it so unreasonable that we would want the object of our worship back? Do you think we weren't aware of what happened six years ago? We will never let you have Kia ever again. Tell us already. Tell us the truth about Kia, her parents, her true identity. You have to know where she came from. <laughs> oh, you simple fellows. Let me guess. I'm not. I'm still call it right now. She has no parents. She's like a robot or something, isn't she? You're still playing for this type of assumption that Lady Kia was born in this era. Huh? This era. Very well. That all this information to those who haven't achieved wisdom would normally be prohibited. 
But I'm not waiting to provide enlightenment for you poor, lost souls. You might even say, demon souls. I tell Jeff a month ago, the divine child was asleep. Ah, she was asleep, how lucky. I, I wish I could go to sleep. Don't worry, Tio Todd. I'm sure you'll be able to get some sleep sometime. All right. In the trail, you see resting on the top of the altar. It was there that Lady Kia has slept since this room was first read 500 long years ago. Wait, what? Really? Okay. But why? <laughs> huh? What? That's not possible. Shirley, you can't be that surprised. While well, Martel, you can't hope to achieve wonders like this. It's easily done with the gifts of the ancient Sumerians. 500 years ago, there lived a group of alchemists who gathered in this land with the intent of studying artifacts. Records say that this very altar was built using their powerful technology. Uh, same alchemists that destructed Star Razor's Tower, I bet. I had no idea all these places were related to each other like this. Wait, I was in a still home. <laughs> I had no idea that all these places were laid to each other like this. As I said, Lake you have been a slumber since those ancient times! Ancient times! However, not even the highest rating members of our order know our true origins. That is the story of the Divine Child. I can't believe this. What the heck, man? I thought we all helped you find our past together. Ah. Ha! <laughs> now, what's with the long faces? Lake Tia doesn't need a past. Because after all, Soon, she will take her rightful place as the true god! What do you say? God? <laughs> you heard me! All of you need to open your eyes to see the truth of the world for what it is! Adios, the gods of the sky! There's no such thing! Why can't you understand that her very existence is a fabrication created by the Sophia Church? Oh! 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 Am I going to be right about this? You lost your mind. I can't believe there are people who genuinely doubt the goddess. That's, that's the truth that DRMG faithfully preaches. However, we're often misunderstood. You see, we don't worship devils at all. Quite the contrary, actually. We simply make use of the iconography because it's convenient in our fight to deny the very concept of this goddess. Fighting fire with fire, so to speak. <sighs> you can't be serious! If that's really the truth, why do you do all those horrible things to me and all the other children? All of them. <sighs> Their anguished screams never stopped echoing through the halls. And there were even worse lodges than the one I was in. Places where even more horrible things were done. So if you really you aren't worshipping devils, then why? Why do you do all those things? Tio. Tio thought. Haha. <laughs> Tio Plato. I remember you well. An Altair Lodge test subject, whose superb sensory receptivity was most miraculous. I am truly fortunate to have been able to beat such a splendid test subject of ours like this. Hmm. This is the time to ask then, what was the goal of all those inhuman rituals you performed six years ago? <laughs> Got as you saw the very out? I thought you were supposed to be a detective, lied. <laughs> Each and every one of these rituals served the very purpose of enhancing Gnosis towards final perfected form. The willpower and hidden potential that blossoms when one is brought to the breaking point. That kind of data was a necessity if we wanted to prevent Gnosis. The reason we used Shelter for our tests was simply because it ensured more accurate data. Ugh, ugh. <laughs> you see, test subjects that have yet to reach puberty are, in various aspects. Ow! That's enough! Have you no shame, you monster? I thought I meet someone more messed up than my family. Wait, oh, oh! That's. <laughs> Randy? Uh, Jacob Dunter, based on everything we've heard, you must have been a uh, person responsible for organizing these experiments all over as a murder, right? <laughs> Precisely. However, our order never placed much importance on hierarchy. Yes, you see, we're all equals under our true god. Well, to be honest, I don't give if, if, uh, <laughs> a. <laughs> to be honest, I don't care her one bit about whatever your cult believes in. But you know about that place, don't you? Paradise. It was one of your lodges, wasn't it? Oh, is this something from like the Trails in the Sky series? Paradise? Hmm. Paradise? We saw that name before. It's mentioned in the Black File. Ow. You know, as this is that. 
That particular loss was created at the behest of the most powerful members of the Royal Order. They invited influential figures, care to their most depraved fancies, and use that as leverage for the Order's benefit. Ugh! Straight thing told. The Lodge deviated from my research principles, which I did not appreciate! So it's true. Uh, just like we thought. Answers another one of my questions. You lured Speaker Hartman to Paradise in order to coerce him into helping the cult, didn't you? That's it! There's our connection. I only... I only be able to truly understand and what happened there after I poured over the results of every established lodge. After that aggravating operation six years ago, we nearly lost all of our precious lodges. Fortunately, we stumbled across the perfect badger for our cause. Peter Hartman. Conveniently enough, he came with a nice bonus for Vision Cup. Everything's falling into place now. And you manipulated the crossbell guardian force through the same connection, didn't you? Speaking of the guardian force. How do you even get them to, to take the drug in the first place? Oh, that was simple. The CGF commander is Speaker Hartman's protege, so I have in the fall in my hand as well. All I have to do, he was pass Gnosis off as a new supplement developed at St. Ursula. It was a bit of a shock how easily he believed me, though. Ugh. What a dumb person. How are y'all can get? Guards of Paradise, there's one detail about its fall that was strange. Instead of being targeted by the same giant bribe student as the other lodges, it was destroyed by the secret society responsible for the incident in Barrel. Oh dear, just what were they thinking? Huh. Hmm. Well, the stretch of paradise only left me with one genuine regret. That being the loss of a young test subject who demonstrated a remarkable level of adapt adaptability. And her name was Millium! <gasps> what? 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 I'm sorry, sorry, that I got the files on this stuff. And her name was... I'm just going to assume it's Ren. Oh, she was simply a marvel. Through heart stenosis, she could absorb other subjects' personalities and manifest them in her own mind! What? What? What does that mean? Is that how Kia gets her powers? Or is this not Kia? Is this what Ren can do? Or is this something completely different? The loss of that day was truly a tragedy. Huh. Okay. Are they gonna use this as like a way to as as a way to like bring someone back from the dead, so to speak? Like if they could like mimic the personality of someone who existed in the past, would they be able to essentially essentially resurrect someone? Maybe? Hm. That's enough. We have what we came for. You can shut your disgusting mouth. <laughs> Estelle has the best lights! I mean, T.O. also has the best lines, but Estelle has the best <laughs> I'm just trying to imagine how much of a... <laughs> like, how entertaining it must be to have, like, a, a main character who says lines like this. It's ever... That's all the time. <laughs> this is how Estelle how he usually behaves. First of all, what kind of hero are you, Estelle? And second of all... <laughs> uh... I just say, so you're more excited to hopefully challenge Run Trails in the sky sometime. Uh, sorry, Lloyd. We kind of took over your interrogation. It's fine. Thanks to your help, I was able to draw a lot of conclusions about the case. And now, I'm fully prepared to arrest him. High Priest Jordan Gunter of the D Therefore G Cult. In accordance with state law, you are hereby under arrest on the charges of assault, disturbing the peace, unlawful occupation of property, drug use, making T.O. not get any sleep. Actually, Lloyd, I've always had that problem. Oh, fair enough. Not providing enough coffee, he's a Noel Seeker. Um, Lloyd, that's kind of the military's problem, not his problem. Oh. And child abuse. <laughs> Telling you it's only formality, but we have both a search warrant and an arrest warrant signed and approved. You know what's good for you? Don't resist. <laughs> you are so intriguing. I have an idea. Why don't we make a wager? Which of us will be the ones to accomplish their goal? Uh oh. Final boss time. Oh, his hair turned... Oh, no! He's a caster-type enemy. His hair. And that's it's our armor staff. Oh, no! Oh, 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 no, he's, it's, it's like Reen and, and Crow. Like, they're, this guy has whatever they have. It's like a... I don't know what it's called. Like an ogre form. Uh-oh. 
Oh dear, Chad, this guy's gonna have like a th hundred thousand health, isn't he? Oh dear. Ugh. The one thing I know about anyone with the Nodra Force, they have a ludicrous amount of health. Ah, yes, that's my hair, too dark. You see, as a result of repeated Gnosis consumption, my mind has been altered somewhat. Are you telling me Reed went through this stuff? No! No! <laughs> no! Also, hold on a second, chat. I see that, um. Spot tips uh, inviting someone, so let me bring them on. One second while I do that. Everyone. Also, hello, Smart Kid. Thanks for dropping by. How's it going? Welcome, welcome. Welcome to the. <laughs> welcome to what will hopefully be the finale stream to Trails from Zero. <laughs> welcome, indeed. Oh, wait, what are you doing here, Dooley? <laughs> I could ask you the same same question, Herschel. <laughs> Why are you there? I, I know we've uh, had to butt heads in the in the past, but. Uh, it's at least here. Can't we just enjoy play a fun stream? <laughs> I guess I'll, I'll agree to this truce for now. All right. Well, if you two have stopped arguing, <laughs> uh, hello, Spudkip. Thank you for dropping by. How's it going? Welcome, welcome, <laughs> and welcome, I'm indeed, to this final stream. And is, does that guy have white hair, just like Hype Reen and and Pro? He does indeed, Dooley, and that's why I was I was shocked because I'm like. I think this is implying that both Crow and Reen might have undergone something similar. I guess the real question is, how did they end up getting Gnosis? Because nothing, at least from what I've seen so far in Trails of Cold Steel's lore, would have seemed to... Actually, wait, 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 I take it back, I take it back. I think Crow probably got it from, uh... From Vita Clotilda. Cause, I mean, Via Plotzilla using stuff like this wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. Or at least knowing of it. My hands are even would be also be a fault, but no, 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 there's a difference here, Smutkip. The difference is, Joe and Gunter's hair did not look like that at the start, nor were his eyes red. But yet, now it's like when he's powered up, he looks like this. Crow and Reen are the same way. I feel like Crow's kind of always in a powered up state, and Lo and, not Lloyd, and Reen he gets like this when he's in his ogre form. So uh, what I'm saying is, I'm thinking in my head that there's a decent chance that both of them were victims of the Gnosis consumption. Now the question is under what context? I think Crow probably did it willingly with the help of Via Clotilda, if that's the case. And for Reen, it's probably something in his distant past involving, uh, involving uh, the Chancellor Osborne, I'd have to imagine. Regardless though, You see, as a result, or perhaps I simply had done great due to not being able to sleep sleep over the past all years. Yeah, I want to talk. Oh, please, you you got sleep every couple of weeks. Come on, please, I'm barely functioning. You're pretty sure Crow's hair was always silver? And that's also a possibility. It's just, with how powerful Crow is, I always thought that maybe he, he had an odor form, but maybe I, maybe I did rest. Like, you know, it's Okay, fair enough. Maybe that's just a stylistic choice. But here, though, this is clearly a transformation. This, this thing. Hey, this ain't time for your jokes, you freak. You tell me you haven't slept for years? Actually, with Tio Todd, that wouldn't be that much of a surprise. Hey! I see. That would explain how you're able to do all this while working full time at the hospital. Ow. Oh, oh. perhaps you're a better test than I did, you crap, my line. As for your question, Tio, this staff here is one of the immortal masterpieces created by the ancient alchemist of Frostmail. Power it holds out strips even the most dangerous artifacts. That's not really saying much, just we can't change our equipment. Is magical power? No! Uh oh. No! Allows me to add these to wretched creations as I please! <sighs> Dang it. Are these. Okay, this is from the Middle Ages, created with the power of alchemy. Uh oh. Oh no. Now I believe it's time for our finale to get underway. 
This day will be a day to remember. A momentous occasion that will echo through history. The day that the challenge run ends. The day that Lady Tia attains her true powers as a god. The day that all our desires are realized at long last. The day that, well, you get on with it. Enough with your delusions. We will never lose, not to the likes of you. As long as we have consumable items that you can't one-shot us, we're gonna do our best. Ooh, okay, here we go. So it begins, chat. So, I'm just going to guess, looking at these enemies, I guess the if this is going to be, if this ends up being like a single phase final boss, my guess would be we have these enemies being the melee attackers and Joachim Gunter being like a casting type enemy. Now, as always, I think it's worth it to at least get an idea of what we're dealing with here. So, let's uh, do a battle scope. Let's say you. Okay, immune to everything. Can't be offensive by fire. Interesting. Okay. Uh, not immune to defense, like, stat downs, though. Hmm. All right. Physical- oh, oh, wait, what? Physical attacks are useless? What? Uh-oh. Well, that means S-Craft spam won't work unless we're using someone that has a magic attack. By Tio. Hmm. All right, well, looks like we need casting. All right, what about Dr. Gunter? Hmm. Okay, kind of neutral. Hmm. I don't have a bad feeling about this chat. Just looking at the way that everything's static here, it makes me feel like this ha this might is probably a phase one. Wheels of Magic Device uses Dark Arts. Okay. Well. Ah, oh, that's ominous. Shroud. We prepared some casting in that case. I mean, we have to prepare for casting at this point. Let's go with... Actually, which, um... I think, I think this, you know, LA can easily do the strongest attack, and since they are, they're weak, actually, well, no, they're weak to ice, so Tia would actually be, like, really strong here, since she can use Diamond Dust. Alright, you know what? Tia, prepare your Diamond Dust. We must delete. Oh, what's this? No! <laughs> I was about to say, like, like an evil Tia version. Why me? Uh-oh. Well, we definitely need HP and some... This is exactly why we have the Mother's, uh... What's it called? The Mother's Lunchbox. For a very specific, uh, purpose. Well, we can't AT delay anything, unfortunately. Can't even use her stats if that's... We're gonna have to get creative. Gotta give that ultimate net to Tio. Alright, we don't. I could always have a Stella go for a morale boost. If, oh, wait, that's not gonna help at all. You know, I'm just realizing, Dr. Gunter could probably be, like, at least somewhat, um, affected by, uh... Good luck? Alright, thank you. 
Uh, thanks, I'm at submission. I appreciate the, the well wishes. <laughs> We're trying our best. Alright, um, let's go with... So, I'm going to guess that the, f the reason that the fire attacks, they have fire immunity is so that we can't just reflect liquid our way. Hey, it's a defeat them. Let's, um... We need everyone set up. So let's give a Mother's Lunchbox to... them. What's happening? Ow. What? No! Ah. This is not good. This is going horribly. Um. Yeah, we're not getting any spells off. That's that's a problem. I was hoping we would have done at least a bit better than that. Oh, they're super weak to, sp to space, though. No, unfortunately, we'll have to sell for an Avalon game in that case. We got LEV, the main caster here, because she has the. Do I have anything that like cures burn and also heals a lot? I don't think I do. Well, we need heal up. For sure. Let's go with... Alright, we, we need to give Ellie every opportunity to succeed. So... Give her the ultimate mix. What? Oh, he gets an S trapped. No. Why? Why? We're probably dead. Ellie somehow survived. Oh, we're muted though. That's really bad. <laughs> so it says, I believe. <laughs> we, we got muted though, so that's not good. Um, I could revive us. Like, I could S trap to revive us right now. Because right now we are currently right on fumes at the moment. Now, what's really annoying about this is that physical attacks are useless against these these angel old characters, so I almost wonder if it would be better to actually defeat Dr. Gunter first so that we could just focus on these things. Because they always seem to do the same thing. The challenge, of course, is actually defeating Dr. Gunter. Let's go with... Where's my, where are my steaks? Well, not my steaks, I need, I need a hamburger. Hmm. I want Joshua again knocked out. Let's raise the steaks. Teal got a double move, though. <laughs> well, looks like I got a, a rush here, so that's dead. My vote is... Give me a barter. Then let me heal. Alright. What are they doing? Uh oh. I don't like that. I don't know what they're doing, but I don't like it. Do I have an impede? Do I have an impede mood? I don't know. I think Estelle does, but I don't. 
Either way, I'm pretty sure this is only going to impact... Um, I'm pretty sure this will only impact Dr. Gunter, but even so, damage is damage. Get up! Because it looks like a physical attack to me. Wait, what? That actually hit? Did the description lie to me? The fat thing's in stealth. Oh no! We're dead. No! No! Ow! All right, chat. So what did we learn? We learned that the description lied. Uh, scraps work. <laughs> okay. Well, I need to do some push-ups. Give me one second. <laughs> one second. Come on, Anton. Let's see if you can do it. Yeah. Work hard, work honorably. Thanks guys, did my best. Okay. Where were we? Oh yeah. So what I was realizing is like, I was working under the assumption that F-Crafts wouldn't work, but if F-Crafts don't do damage, then, then, the, then, the, then what we need to do is obvious. <laughs> Operation F-Crafts spam is a go. Why? Can we not? No! I should have just gone for Tio's as crap. I'm, I'm dumb. Mm. This is a horrible way to start the. <laughs> to start our everything. Okay, so what I'm thinking is. We need. We never want them in top form here. And heal them both for a little bit, but they're going to have to at least heal themselves. I'm pretty sure fire, like, is inflicted at the end of the turn, not the beginning of the turn, so... Let's give... the double strength boost. To Estelle. So that she's raring to go. Right level strength boost. Up oh, there it is. Joshua, you need one of those launch boxes now. All right, we're going to put some Estelle in the stealth mode, so we can really maximize this damage. Oh, they're quick. Okay, we'll take that. Let's go for. Where's my Celestial Bomb? Alright, and with that chat, now Estelle will finally be able to do her thing. Or I guess her and Joshua will do their thing. Timeless Funnel Time. Uh, oh, come on, they're not in range. <sighs> That's not good. I mean, this is still better than nothing, but definitely would have liked it better if we could have actually hit both of them. We go. That's the kind of damage we want to see. No! <laughs> Why? Why does you go for this so early? Come on! Come on! We only got started. Tio stopped even. Oh. Why? Nope. Well, it's time for this. Uh oh. No! Come on! No! 
no, not still, no! Stop! Why? Joshua! Oh, uh, we're in a pedal. This is gonna be the time to actually use the Zerum powder. <laughs> this is looking very, very dire. I think it, I also think it is. This is the, our first Zerum powder use of the game, chat. Why? Oh. No! Oh, not this attack. This attack's horrible. We, we need to impede it. We, we absolutely need to impede it. Or actually, wait. No, if this is like an AoE attack, if we're not actually physically here, then it won't hit. Let's, um... Yeah, basically everyone's hiding at this point. Okay, it's looking like secrecy popcorn might actually be like pod in this uh, in this in this stream. Hmm. What's the play here though? We have a rush. So I think we need to take advantage of that. I'll use her as crap, essentially. Either way. Where are the hammer at? Figure this out, chat. Where are my hamburgers? There we are. Ow. Ow. We, we really gotta space people out there. This is not working. Now! Why wow, this has always happened to me? I know, Joshua, but either way, it's not good. Okay, that actually hits two. Oh, oh, we've lost. We've lost. We're confused. We've lost. It's a shame, too, because it definitely feels doable. It's just doing the right things at the right time. Oh, we're dead. <laughs> well, looks like we have another 10 push-ups starting our way, chat. Ow. Okay, note to self. If we don't get first on the turn order, we need T.O. to use her S-Crafts. <laughs> like, this is doable, chat. This is completely doable. Let's do those 10 push-ups. Working on it. Okay. All right. All right.
Alright, Dr. Gunter first. You know, that's actually good. And the reason that's good is because it actually moved Dr. Gunter closer to where we're currently at. So right now, we need this to be our setup turn. So looking at how everything's going to shape up. Let's say that I use a... Okay, then he'll be nuts. Alright, so what we gotta do... Get Joshua to double strength boosted and stealth mode so that he can go for his super attack. Or I guess our combined super attack. And since we already know that Dr. Gunter can have his stats reduced, we could actually have Tio potentially reduce that with her ability. Potentially. Now, this is all in a very idealistic setting. First things first. Double strength boost to um, Joshua. And then taking no chances, we're having Tio go immediately for her craft guard. All right, I'm tired. I knocked out every five seconds. Here it comes Zero Field. Adamantine Shield times two. Well, actually, a critical hit. That's an opportunity. If we're able to make use of it. Oh, Joshua got that's a preview. That's nice. Okay. So, let's think about this chat. I see that free critical hit. I want to make use of it. The thing is, though, with the way Estelle and Joshua do their thing. Let's see, what's the most efficient thing to do here? Um, actually, Ellie, wait a minute. Oh! Well, there we go! Problem solved! <laughs> Oh, the damage that is about to be unleashed. Actually, what would be better? No, 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 this would be better. <laughs> the damage. Let's see, okay, so... I always call it a crit. I'm trying to think. I'm running the damage calculations in my head chat to try and figure out what's like the, the play here. Do I, I think we need to do the still on Joshua stealth. So that there will do more damage. Ellie will still do a lot of damage. Just probably not as much like the highest potential she could. Okay. Let's go with... Where is it? Um, I need my secrecy popcorn. Okay. Oh, so we'll let it go afterwards. That's good. Pot potentially. All right, Joshua. Time for our timeless pummel. <laughs> Come on, you two. You got this. You got this. Good damage. Not the best damage. Oh. I am noticing that... Hmm. I think we go for it. On the off chance that this actually defeats all of them. Well, it won't defeat all of them, but at least hopefully defeat, uh... The minions. Please. I do wish for blanking this is not crit. Uh, oh, we got one. I still have to finish the other. Yeah, this thing's, uh... Yeah, still finishes the other. So that way it's just us versus Dr. Gunter. <sighs> ah, enough of these things. Ah! Peanuts wave! Alright. We will. 
Of course he goes for this. Well, now everyone's gonna be knocked out except Joshua. And maybe Estelle. Depending on what the damage is. And that attack is brutal. Oh, Estelle went. No, 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 oh no, 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 please, 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 please. Okay, Joshua lived. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, it's pretty obvious what we gotta do here. I agree, Joshua. It's painfully obvious what we need to do here. Where, where's my Zerum powder? I don't like using it, but it's not like we have much of a choice. So now we can revive everyone. And we can fight the doc. And we can fight the doctor. No. Ow. Wow, she actually, actually missed that. No! Dio, come back! Oh, great. Why is this keep happening to us? I mean, we could just S craft spam this guy to death, but it's probably what we'll end up having to do. Let's see, where's that? Where are those stakes? Actually, the burgers heal more, don't they? Pretty sure they do. Yeah. That's... Oh, he's pro I guess he would normally do that just to get out of the way of the other enemies. Is he actually giving us some time to... to think here, or is he just gonna come for, like, a stealth attack just to, uh, delete us all? Well, whatever the case may be. I broke up, Tio. I need you. Hmm. I think, um, is there a chance for me to get, like, no, I don't have any kind of, okay, so, since T.O. always seems to be getting attacks, so let's give T.O. a secrecy popcorn. Uh-oh. How did I know that was going to happen? Well, I think that ended up being the right call because Teal will be able to heal us all if we if we give her like enough uh, CP to work with. So where are my bar guards? There's my order. Okay, think about who's going to get the chance to go for the S craft. Oh, that helps. Let's see here. So who gets to, who gets to go for the the S draft here? If Estelle uses her CP to buff all our strengths, that means it's actually Joshua who needs to be in stealth, so that he can hit super duper hard. So. Let's see here. So I put myself into stealth. Unfortunately, it means we go after Dunter Dunter's turn. That's never that's never a good thing. So we don't know what he might try. All right. Well, Tio, heal us. Alrighty, everyone. Let's have a morale boost. No. Ow. Why do you have to be the way that you are, Dr. Gunter? You're the worst.
You know, might actually be a good idea to use TO's S craft right about now. Just because we don't exactly know what Dr. Gunter's going to do. So. Let's heal. Give everyone that chance, that opportunity. This actually gives Ellie an opportunity to hit with a with a hard attack. Or like with a strong attack. So I think. Let's see, thinking about what is like the hardest hitting thing I have here. This is gonna be Avalon Gate. Let's see, so we have this. Now is our time to strike, so. Timeless Pummel. I believe this will be do a ton of damage because it's double strength boosted and it's uh, from stealth. Yeah, nice hit. Uh oh, is he going to go for it? Oh, he darted. Oh, did Tio have time to heal us? Oh wait, no, she can't because she doesn't have enough CP. I didn't think to throw. Now. Uh oh. Ah, he's so close to being knocked out. I did not think this through. Okay. Hmm. I think right now... Let's make Ellie invisible. Oh, he's going for stealth mode again. Well, that means we definitely need to heal, like, now. Well, actually, then again, he can't strike us if he can't see us. I don't want to waste secrecy popcorns, though. Do I have, like, a AoE healing spell that... no... Okay, he can heal two of us, but one of us is definitely getting knocked out. Actually, no, wait, Ellie's hidden. Which means if I use this turn to heal Estelle and Tio. Let well, you know, Ellie's not hidden, just she's going to be she's not gonna be hidden at the end of the turn. Darn it! Um Oh, actually, wait, I have a brilliant idea. So, what I'm going to do... I'm going to use a burger on Tio. Or actually, I'll use some... I need a healing item for Tio that gives a gem out CP. And we have this and the omelet. Let's go with that. All right. Now here, here's the here, here's the brilliant plan, chat. We do this, then we're immediately going for for Tio's uh, S craft, so that way she can just make sure that no one gets hit. Ha ha! Nice try, Doctor Hunter. Ha! You've been outsmarted. All right. Looking at what we're dealing with here, we don't want to give Dr. Gunter a crit because that would be very bad. So instead, let's uh, give a burger to Joshua so he's all maxed out. As a fail safe, we shall give a burger to Estelle, and then we'll immediately go for Joshua's S craft.
All right, Joshua, tell me you can finish this off. You only need to do 3,000 damage, dude. You got max CP, you got a critical hit. That's all you, bud. Yes! Let's go. <laughs> all done. I've got a very bad feeling that's probably only phase one. That'd be my guess. We did it! Huh, looks like we won that little wager of yours. Tore aside your weapon and got on the ground. <laughs> I have to decline! Let me tell you something special support section. Gnosis doesn't just enhance the user's physical strength and capabilities. It also highlights their sensory receptivity, unlocking Mary's true hand potential. When used correctly, anything can be achieved. I figured as much. What? <laughs> oh, I said the same thing. What? 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 That is this. He warped the space around us? Wow! <laughs> Joshua, isn't this exactly like Weissman's evil eye? <laughs> that should be impossible. That too. Have you had quite the adventure over the last two years? How are you? Ah, the Liber Arc and Phantasma, was it? How does he know that? Is he looking into our memories? No way. Is he using them to recreate the his ability? Weissman, huh? <laughs> but what's of it? We've gotten along quite well. How interesting. I was say this until an oral borrows. Such a treasure of information will keep me entertained for quite some time to come. Oh, I can't believe this. Now, I guess I have to say I am in fact the victor of the wager. As for my prize, I think I'll have each of you take some notes for yourselves. For lot, you'll follow one of the rest of those under my command. And then, Lady Kia will be glad to return here, where she truly belongs! You... This was your plan all along, the reason you lured us here. Well, of course, what other use do I have for imbeciles such as yourselves? Everything I have done, I have done for Lady Kia's sake. What other reason can I possibly need? Darn you! Wait, wait! Lloyd! <laughs> <laughs> Will Lloyd be able to, like, get through this barrier, like, this physical barrier? Does this sound like really cool? If you already have this much power, why are you so obsessed with Kia? Out. Even if she was born 500 years ago, like you say, that doesn't change the fact that she's an ordinary little girl, does it? What does someone with so much power want with a girl like Kia? That's right. Yeah, good question. Damn, I answered all right. Like, Kia is supposed to become the true god! That you compare my power to that, like, Kia's only charge your ignorance! Now, rather, perhaps I should say the comparison of itself is absurd. I'm talking riddles. Man, this guy might as well be Weissman's little brother or something. Fine, answer me this. What led to Kia being moved to the Schwarz auction? Huh? That's true. We still haven't figured that out. Ah, uh, yeah, no idea how she got there either. I got another question for you. Were you the one who killed my brother, Guy Bannings? Oh, that's it. It all makes sense now. <laughs> Two brothers, ten years of iron age. After the older brother fell in the line of duty, the younger left Prospell left to return years later. <laughs> what a stunning plot twist. I had no idea you two be related to that nuisance. So you don't deny it then. Of it. He came close to uncovering my true identity during his investigation. Five eyes was such a distraction. I had no choice but to ask for Vush to silence him. Permanently. But some other faction killer report attempted before Vush to do the job. Two years ago, Marconi tried to spin the story like they did it, bragging about how much I owed him. Hmm. But Darcia denied it, so I doubt that was the case. That's not what I thought, too. So I know my brother would have never lost to the lights of- <laughs> <laughs> Ah! Oh, I'm all plain. As for how Kia came to be the option, I think that was also something that didn't go according to your plan. After all, there's no way you willingly lose sight of your god. I have to agree. Have you allowed you all? It's true that on that day, Lakia finally woke from her long slumber. Her by the time I became aware of it, she was nowhere to be seen. Initially, I thought she might have lost her way and wandered to the surface. That's why I got herself locked in a doll trunk? That's ridiculous. You and I both know that would never happen. For he was tipped off about Kia's presence at the auction. In other words, well, you may be the mastermind behind the days, there are a salary amount of things you simply don't know. <laughs> you tell him, Lloyd. Amazing work, Lloyd! Yeah, I really thought that was to sell the ears to use. No, it really matters here, unless you have some way to get over this barrier. 
<laughs> What's your point? As soon as Lake here returns to me, now these trashes won't matter! Hmm. Then what about Gnosis? That's supposed to be your true wisdom. I've had enough with your jokes. All you're doing right now is pairing people's memories and topping things that aren't yours. And that drug of yours is no different. The drug you created through sick experiments. It's the result of sloppy trial and error, of torturing and killing innocent children over and over. Tell me, where's the wisdom in that? Curse you. Call it wisdom. Call it wisdom is a disgrace to the word itself. My owl might be a better description of the acts you've committed. Man, I really never thought I'd be saying this, but I'm sorry to think Weissman actually have more of a moral standard than this piece of work. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. And now, oh, it's like going right through this very like super anime logic. Let's go. You're trying to force your worthless delusions onto Kia, a girl as bright as sunshine, as bright as sunshine itself, the light of our lives. She's grown more precious to us than you'd ever know. Yes. And we'll never let someone like you near her ever again. Impossible! You're not supposed to get over the barriers. Why? What you do? I have no idea. <laughs> we, we can move. Barriers are gone. In the end, his evil eye was nothing more than that pale imitation of the real thing. As soon as he loses focus, he falters. Seems he hasn't quite professed the ability after all. He didn't even need an orange just like, you know, that's a fair point! <laughs> that's a fair point, Lloyd's too OP! <laughs> and Lloyd's burning spirit was enough to smash it to pieces. Shokin Dunter, we've seen through your every master egg you set up. No matter what more you have to up your sleeve, nothing is going to stop us. Surrender now, or prepare to fight! <laughs> You're right. I suppose you leave me no choice. I've just seen demon form. Huh? What are you mumbling about? I may be forced to use my truck car, but here we are. What? That can't be. Oh, it's Gnosis. Or actually, no, it's not Gnosis. It's something else. I only let you much more. <laughs> See, that's become a, a, a demon. My Sierra's perfected Gnosis, my last work you did say. If we call it drugs, you found blue Gnosis, then I'd say it'd be appropriate to call us red Gnosis. About to bring down the Matrix! Heavy. <laughs> Is this the stuff that caused Ernst and all those mafia dudes to transform? You're right, you are. Don't. He takes that many of them. He's about to become like a super demon, is he? An overdose. <sighs> we gotta get him to throw them back up. I see. I can see it. Almighty D, the origin of lost power. <laughs> Demon time. Uh oh, that's a demon, all right. <laughs> Spot cap. <laughs> Why that? <laughs> sure, Dom, good Spot Kip, didn't ya? Do you? Why are you supporting that? I mean, it was kind of funny, I'll admit that. Especially with the, with the dab emoji. What? Goddess, what is that? You can't be serious. That's intense pressure! Phase two! Joshua, do you think? Nah, uh, definitely. This might be even stronger than Weissman fused with the Septon Baron. Uh, this is right! I feel it! I've reached the truth of everything! I can see the state of the world! And the hidden designs behind it! Get a hold of yourself. You're just doing nothing but lies. The truth isn't something you can see so easily. <laughs> Only humanity is bound by such limitations! I can see everything! The truth behind Laetia's disappearance. The truth behind your brother's murder. And the inevitable fate of Crossbell. You're bluffing. There remains no reason to allow you insects to live any longer. Now, lament over your fragile existence and die! And the is on a completely different level than her wrists. Yeah, that guy was a small part for this. 
But there's nothing we can do now but stand her down and fight. All right, get ready, everyone. Ellie, Tio, Randy, Estelle, and Joshua, too. This is it, our last stand. Don't give up no matter what. Right. Final boss time, I'm assuming. Whoa. What the heck is that? Deadly Clown, Vital Clown, Demon Jokum. Uh-oh. Oh, but I see tricks, though. Hold on, hold on. I see an opportunity. I see an opportunity, and I'm going to take it. Actually, I see a double opportunity here. Granted, I won't be able to do the double strength boost trick. But we might be able to get two S crafts at once and at least get some damage off. I think the smartest thing I can do right now is... Let's, let's go with... Burger on myself. So that way Joshua can get an S-Craft off. And a lot of stealth go for her S-Craft. So that way we're really getting our, our damage in here and wasting these critical hits. Get him, Joshua. I sincerely doubt this will defeat these the, the clowns, but this should at least do a little bit of damage. Yeah. Oof! That health bar on, on Jokum Dunter. Uh, that is a lot of health. Okay, so we've got... I have no idea which is worse. I don't think this cell's going to one-shot anything, so... Let's at least get the enemies in defeatable range. Alrighty. Oh, okay, thank goodness that missed. Evasion take Dally. I don't even know what. Hmm. Ellie, how quickly can you cast a spell? Thing is, I don't know what these things are like weak to or not, so that could be a problem. The music is definitely going in, though. Oh, actually, wait, wait, wait. Joshua did a fair amount of damage last time, though. Then, then that was a crit. I see um, an opportunity here, then. Couple opportunities. Burr burgers. to Joshua's a strength boost. Where are my stakes? And now let's see, hopefully can Joshua at least get rid of the, the clowns? Let's find out. Oh, he got rid of one. No, he didn't. Ah. Ow. What'd that do? Oh, the half is gonna go. No! No, not 18 delay. No! No! Oh dear. Uh oh. Tia, why is it always Tia? This is not dead. We don't want to give them a double turn, unfortunately. Uh, what do I do? 
The problem is, if Joshua goes for an S craft, he gets um. I don't think we'll be fortunate enough to survive as much drama. Hey, this is clearly the final boss, too. All bets are off! All bets are off! Oh, this was actually a hard one, yep. No! Why did I take this through? Was this the right call? I have no idea. I think that might have been the right call. Okay. Let's go with another burger. I'd watch where I'm standing, just a heads up. Uh, why? Is, is it because if we're not inside like that certain so, I'm not asked the dumb question, like, if I'm like, so, is it just being staying close together, or is the challenge, or is the concern that if I'm not, like, inside here or inside here, something really bad will happen? Because I, I noticed that both of these areas got highlighted, and I don't know why. Something bad will happen. So basically, something bad will happen if I don't get into these areas, is what you're saying? Other way around. So something bad will happen if I stand in these areas? So, like, I'm fine here, but not fine here. But, like, on the edges, okay? Where you are is fine, just be careful. All right, understood, gotcha, gotcha. Hmm, all right, in that case, let's see. Let's go with. Where's the burger? Actually, let's see. Yeah, no, burger's good. Not, not burger this time. Let's go with. Where's that blooming hot pot? I have an 80 CPI item here somewhere. Yeah, a gorgeous hot pot. There we go. Four. No. Well, might as well give Joshua the opportunity to hit really hard, so super see popcorn for you, Joshua. Obviously it's unnecessary for the clowns, but it's very necessary for the main boss. Down, Joshua. Nice damage. Oh, is the concern the explosions from that? Oh, no, no, I understand, I understand. Okay, I understand. I understand. <laughs> if we had stood there, we would, have we would have just completely lost our party members completely. I think I understand. Thanks for the warning, Game Spot Tip. Yeah, that would have been horrible. Well, I have to admit, I want to say this. That was a clever use of space there. This is the first time I've seen Trails actually, like, change the playable area in mid-battle. That's really cool. But yeah, I understand. So I think the whole idea there is that if you used a melee build against those things, you would just get you'd lose your party members. So I I understand.
That's really cool. Now let's give, um... We just, Tio just needs 40 CP. How about Bloom and Hot Fox, Tio? And we'll have Tio cure our stack down, so... There we go, much better. Man, the music's going in, too. This is really, really hype. Okay. So, we have a demon jo um... We have a demon here. The question... No! What did I do? I, uh, I missed life! No! Come back to snow! Come back! No! <laughs> Take this! No! No, I did miss life! No! Ah! What have we done? What have we done? No! Come back to snow! <laughs> Come back! Ah! At this rate, we probably should just start moving over anyway. Let's do... Yeah, at this point, Estelle does the most damage out of any singular member of our party. I think it would be useful to just to see what this thing's weak to, so you know what? We have an opportunity, let's at least see what I can do. Okay, it's just kinda neutral everything, so... Gotcha. But then we have craft guard. Do I have, uh, I do not. Let's go. thinking what we need to do. We need to get everyone back into CP range to be doing good amounts of damage. The Queen Pizza uh, does heal 50 CP. Alright. I think I know why I'm doing this, this battle. Clear to me that, that we're going to need my craft guard, so... That's neat ADC people. Unfortunately, I don't think I have an item that does that anymore. Oh, we have that for Tia's craft guard in case something horrible happens. Okay. Well, we know everything else is neutral, so... I don't think Art Reflex will help here. Or would that help? I mean, if everything is the same against this guy, then... It's probably whatever... I think Last Disaster might be the single strongest attack we have. So, might as well prepare that. Let's give Ellie every opportunity to succeed here. So we'll give her the ultimate mix. And we'll have... We'll give her a secrecy popcorn as well. So she's protected. She's ready to go for her attack. Okay, good. That missed. Alright, looks like it's my turn to... To move in and do stuff. I 
this rate, evasion would be super helpful for these people. Oh, well, it's going to be a crit. I mean, unfortunately, we, I mean, the stealth will already give the, the crit. Hmm. I mean, just so we're making the best use of our time here. Let's see, what's... If Estelle is, like, at 200 CP, she do, like, a ludicrous amount of damage. Like, her, her attack will be powered up. Or, I could just do a strength up. Yeah, I think that's the play. Strength up. Estelle, go for it. You got this. Show. <laughs> Show me that power. Because Dr. Dunter took, like, the perfected Gnosis and has now become, like, a super demon. Now we must defeat the super demon. Come on. Alright, not bad. Especially since the stall wasn't at, like, max CP. Right, now it's Ellie's turn to do lots of damage, hopefully. Now that's some damage. Good job, Ellie. Good job. All right. Unfortunately, Ellie's also out of EP, so we, we definitely need to change that right now. Where are my EP charges? Okay. Uh-oh. What is he doing? I don't like the look at that. Oh, this is S. This will be his S craft. Are we all dead? Uh oh. Are we all about to die? Except for whoever has craft guard. Uh, here. Wow! That was definitely an attack. Well, I'm sure glad that, that we stay alive, aren't we? Well, this is why we have, uh, Zerum Powders. Unfortunately, T.O. is in no position to actually use them, so... I can get one back up. The stealth can hit the other back up, then we'll have to go for her S craft. Alright, give everyone a trap card to you. Oh, that was, that was a good call! That was a good call! <laughs> okay. And we gotta end this as quickly as possible, I think. Let's see here. Let's get, let's get Ellie back into the swing of things. Where's the ultimate match? Because Ellie did a lot of damage. Okay, with Ellie, we'll, give, well, we can't give her a secrecy popcorn yet because she needs to actually get going. So I think for now, let's get Joshua back into the swing of things. Where are those stakes? All right. Ironically, having Tio in the back there has actually been beneficial because sometimes, like, the big AoE attacks aren't attacking Tio, so that's... that's good. Okay. So we have Craft Guard, and we need... Well, we need... Oh, Ellie's so fast. Alright, Last Disaster, since that seems to do the most damage. 
What does that do? I'm sure glad that we had the guard for that. I also think we need more guards, Antonitz. I agree, too. Do I dare use the Zarin powders on T.O.? They are very useful. Now, so unfortunately, I didn't equip people with, like, Adamantine Guard, just as a spell. Dr. Pepper is very pod. I agree. I like Dr. Pepper. Okay. Where's like my 50 CP recovery dishes? Yeah, have some here somewhere. Oh, these. Glowing hot pots. This is a fun song, by the way. I like this. Very cinematic. Okay, so I think right now... Looking at the way the CP is working out... Let's give... Let's give a, uh, a thingy to Estelle. Or, I mean, I could increase our evasion again. Aqua Mirage? Yeah, it was Aqua Mirage. Now Stealth could apply the Stealth thingy. We'll get some super damage out of that. Flash of Astro does lots of damage. Nice. Here we go. Max Agility. Ow. Oh no, don't no, Tio, 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 no! Oh no. Ooh. Are we on a time limit here? Need to move Tio. Go with well, we first first thing we need is actually CP to use. Nice damage. All right, Ellie, load it now. Why do we not have enough seat? Fine then. Be that way. Oh, I see a crit. Where's my burgers? So they who would, yeah, having Estelle have like the most powerful crit would be the, the, the ideal thing here. So let's um, get her all set up for that. Hmm. Yep, Estelle is best Estelle, indeed. So where are Fred's uh, damage? Uh, no, sorry, we need a double strength up. Hmm. 
There it is. There it is. There it is. Found it. Okay. Now, I think just to be safe, we should have Tio set up another craft guard because we don't know what's going to happen. So. It's, uh. Do I have a plus 40 CP item? Not bad. I do have this. Alright, here's the plan. We are going to first. Let's see, Estelle has her double strength up. That's great. Russian will give her another burger, so that way she's at max damage. So. Estelle, you get another border. We immediately go into TO. So we have our craft guard, just to be safe. And then we'll have Estelle go for a massive uh, critical hit. Show us what you got, Estelle. All right, here I go. Ah. <laughs> do, do, a, do a big chunk of this thing's health, please. Defeat the demon. Slay the demon. How much chance will we do? Yo, yes! <laughs> 7,000, that's what we want to see. What is happening? What? He's ascended, chat. Now he is gold. Wait, what? Uh, what? I do not like the look of that at all. <clears throat> what does that do? <laughs> Why is it? Why does it say HP thing? Is he just regen regenerating health every turn, or what? 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 Well, I do need to take a quick bio break to chat, so don't worry, guys. I will be right back. So, what is this refrain of revenge thing? Is it just going to be like a massive art thing, or I don't know? Uh, I don't see. It is really hard for me to tell what exactly is going on. And the good news is we have craft guard up, so that's something. Okay. I still have one more turn of double strength up. So, Estelle with the double strength boosted crit can get 7,000 damage like that, or if not, that's probably going to be in the 4,000 range. Ellie, on the other hand, can definitely do some serious damage. Well. Not knowing what this guy's about to do. You must prepare for anything.
think this will at least get some damage off. Let's see here. Hand of Ice. Okay. All right, he's recovering about 1,800 health a turn. I don't know what this refrain of revenge is, though. That's got me con con very concerned. And it's now this lost uh, craft guard. Okay. So we need to give Ellie the opportunity to do lots of damage to... Where's the ultimate mix? You got this, Ellie. Solid damage, Ellie. Great job. <laughs> I need to do that down, Ellie. Joshua is close to the nest craft, it seems. I'm now beginning to wish I, I, I made more borders. And noticing that this is going to drain our resources quickly. Hmm. Definitely quicker than I would like. That y'all boosted. Oh no! <laughs> I think the cell's about to get eaten. No! Estelle! I know I should have gone for a stealth spin so I didn't wish that. Wow. Good thing we have Craft Guard. At least this regen's about to run out soon, because that regen's very annoying. Um Gotta have the stall back up. We gotta continuously put damage on this thing. So done. Gotta do another last disaster. Oh, Ellie will get a crit, that's good. Okay, that means we can kinda leave Ellie to uh to herself right now. To everyone else. Unfortunately, I'm actually running low on burgers. <laughs> it's half an age. I don't want Ellie to miss the crit, that's the problem. <clears throat> Do I think we can survive whatever they might throw at us is the real question. Well. Nope. We have an opportunity for Joshua to do lots of damage, so... Might as well take it while we can. Go Joshua Stealth. So he's not targeted. Alright, Ellie survived. Good. Go for that damage, Ellie. Nice! That's what we want to see. That's, that's some good damage. Joshua can get his uh, time to shine here. 
So there you go, Joshua. About four thousand. All right, not the best. Estelle definitely does more damage. All right. Unfortunately, I don't think we have an. Do we have an item that heals like EP and CP? It's like the very first time I've wanted something like that. Speaking of the GLaDOS voice, I mean, that would make sense if GLaDOS is in uh, Coral Story's mouth. Let's go with, um... Alright, Ellie, right now Ellie just needs, uh... Ellie needs HP, and she also needs to be prepared to do lots of damage, so... Obviously, ultimate maps. Two burbs, one stone. And of course, Ellie needs... Some EP, so she can you know, uh, prepare for casting it done. Elliot, prepare your cast. Get that last disaster ready. Alright, and see out craft art, because we don't want to make that same mistake again. Okay, that was the right call! That was the right call! Oh no, he's just resetting his uh, regen. No! Where are you summoning? What did he summon? Is that like a grenade or something? I don't know what that does, but I don't want to find out. Also... Ah, uh, dear, this... Evil Prim Phobos. We don't want to be in a position where he can go for, like, the S-Craft and just knock us all on one shot, because that would be a disaster. So, where is it? Tio! Tio! Recast it, Tio! <laughs> Recast it! <laughs> Please! Okay. This will hit both of them, that's good. Good damage. Always casting an art. <laughs> On a crit turn now! I mean, Craft Guard will block it, but still. Let's see here. Um. If we put Ellie into stealth mode, she should be able to do an enormous amounts of damage, too. Come on. Will this be it? Will this be it? Not quite it. But very close. Well. If we had, like, uh... Unfortunately, we don't have the HP to do stuff like this. You know... I am genuinely concerned that this thing might get a second turn immediately after it casts its art. So, to prepare for that eventuality, I'm giving a Zaren Powder uh, to Tio, actually. So basically, I'm, I'm paying attention, I'm keeping my eye on that turn order if it goes for anything else. Okay. What? Oh dear, no! It got rid of it? Oh, come on! No! Did we just lose? Did we just lose? I think we just lost. Unless Estelle lives on like 1 HP. Okay, no, 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 we survived. Thank goodness. I was... 
Chad, I was scared there. I was really scared. Oh. Oh, that was so scary. Like, the moment I saw the craft guard go away and the animation to do, I'm like, wait, no, 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 no. <laughs> we seem to be alive? Somehow? Alright, Tio. I'm not mad at you. One last, last disaster, as they say. Estelle, we know you're the hero. Can you finish this off for us? Let's find out. Where's Border? Not this again. I can't let him keep uh, uh, doing that. I agree. So, where is my stakes? Evident stakes for the Estelle. And of course, stealth for the Estelle. So that she can attack from stealth mode. Alright, chat. So, the real question at this point is who is going to defeat uh, Dr. Gunter? Is it gonna be Ellie or is it gonna be Estelle? Uh, I think it'll probably be Estelle. Probably going on the alley. Oh! Oh, this is gonna be so cinematic! Yes! Yes! Alright. You push us around long enough, you giant demon! I'm gonna block you so hard, I'll send you into another dimension! I may not be the protagonist this game, but I might as well be. Because I saved this run! Go! Phoenix! But still, let's go, yes! <laughs> Estelle carried this dungeon! <laughs> and Joshua, too. Yes! Let's go! We did phase two on our first try! Let's go! <laughs> What's going on? He seems to have gone definitely in the dark! At this point, I'm not sure how much longer his bike can last. What's going to happen to him? What? No! Ah! Darn it. Now. Oh. Well, if there's gonna be like a cutscene save here, that will be the time. Uh, darn it, if this keeps up. We made it this far, there's no way we can give up now. Not until she's... Not until we can finally hold that girl in our arms and give her the happiness she deserves. Oh, will you please stop trying to adopt Kia? I was talking about Ren. Oh. Never mind then. We feel the same way. You can you can't stop us. We're making it back to our little girl no matter what. Guy, please lend me your strength. <laughs> oh, is that red? <laughs> I may not be your brother, but I can still give you a hand. Hey, there she is. There's the villain of this game. <laughs> Is that? We saw that back that, that at the hospital. Pater Mater. Ren. <laughs> oh, pitiful. But he brought it on himself. Now he gets to get smacked around by Pater Mater, aka Better Lanny. I'll put him out of his misery. Pater Mater, blast him to smithereens! Tell him all, Buster Cannon! Oh, that was like the last of cannon times too, basically. His eyes are free. He's almost down. This is your last chance. Don't take her around too long to charge for another shot. You need to finish this now. <sighs> yeah. Oh, please, no. 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 Oh, wait, 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 wait. We're, we're okay. We're okay. We can do this. We can totally do this. Because he only has 14,000 health. And he can be AT delayed, and he can be burned. And he's super weak to literally everything. Okay.
Where is it? Is it a real boss fight? So that's the, okay, so it can't actually deal damage or anything. It's just kind of there. Well, you know what? I don't care if it's not a real boss fight. I'm not treat it like it is. So we are not giving him any quarter. Where's my double strength boost? Actually, would it be more efficient to have a stall use? No, no, no. Because to heck with this guy. Enough. It can the second phase to where the real difficulty is. Ah, I see. Okay, well, I'm not giving it any chances, okay? Hey, Spudget, like, I, I, I do not have the resources to do this thing a chance. So... <laughs> Let's go with... Think about what's going to do the most damage. Actually, if I have T.O. for... Oh, she could. All right. I see how we're going to do this then. Where's my ATS boost? Well, man, this is really cinematic. I'm loving this. All right. And of course, our last disaster. Yeah, I think the idea of having, like, a third phase is basically just, like, deal the death blow, so to speak. That's a really cool idea. I like that. I like, I like that idea. Okay, so... Ultimate Mix for Ellie. Oh, and it's all death to go again, so we could re even use Secrecy Popcorn if we really felt so inclined. Alright. <laughs> Come on, T.O. <laughs> All right, Ally, you and me together. Yeah, let's see what we can do. Wow, I did a lot of damage. All right, Dr. Gunter. You claim you haven't slept for hundreds of years. I find that sickening. I need a sleep, and you're finally gonna let me take a nap. Be gone, demon. We all banish the nightmare. <laughs> you continue to surprise me, special of our attention. I hate to admit it, but you made me regain control. For that, you have my thanks. Hunter, you. Huh? <laughs> Please, spare me your fading looks. Though I may not live to witness it, our century's long ambition is finally fulfilled. She can do it. Someday, Lady Kia will definitely. He's gone. Tch, full of nonsense for him till the end. I can't help but feel sorry for him. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, don't blame yourself for this. The moment he swallowed all his pills, his fate was sealed. He overdosed. That's his problem. Yeah, that's true. Still, I would have liked to have saved him if it was possible. If for no other reason so I could bonk him on the head again with my high baton. Yeah. He wasn't able to snap out of his delusions, even with death staring him in the face. I had hoped that he would answer for his crimes and admit his guilt. Oh, wow. That's actually a really powerful chat. You, you realize that Dunter Gunter is actually a representation of... um. Basically, someone who isn't willing to compromise on, on their ideals to the point where they get consumed by everything around them. Really cleverly written. It's just, I wanted that so badly for all his victims, and even for him. Lloyd. It's okay, Lloyd. Most of them don't even know he existed anyway. Hey, what the heck are you getting all moody about? Ready? We ain't the gosses, pal. Things aren't always going to go our way. I hope that's not foreshadowing that there actually is going to be a goddess. Look, we only got this far because we worked our butts off. I'm not saying this is the ideal outcome. It's still pretty darn good, ain't it? Randy, I... During the operation at the lodges, many of the cult members committed suicide. 
Die, Arios and Chief Sergei stepped over countless dead bodies to save me. Unfortunately, there are times when sacrifices are inevitable. Do you? He was responsible for his own destruction, but right now, we have to deal with the chaos he left behind. And that might be like one of the most impactful lines of this entire game, because if you think about it, chat, Dr. Gunter represents like the root of all this corruption and crossbow. While the corruption is still there, I think what this is getting at is those who basically cloak themselves in corruption are destined to, uh, to essentially destroy themselves. And in the end, at the end of the day, when 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 they're gone, it's up to you know of the good people that remain to to deal with the chaos that they left behind. Crossbell State is still in a panic. And we need to make sure the Gnosis victims are taken care of. We don't have time to grieve just yet. Ellie. Thank you, everyone. You're all absolutely right. Now's not the time to me for me to feel down. Plus, we need to make good on our promise to the Chief and Tia. Of course. We promise her that we return her to her side safe and sound. And we promise the Chief that we'd set all this case in order to prove ourselves. <laughs> well, guess we're two for two in that case. <laughs> they really make a good team, just like you and me, Estelle. <laughs> you got that right, Joshua. <laughs> it would appear this is the final curtain then! Good night, everybody! <laughs> Uh, what do you mean, good night, everybody? Hey, we still have to do, do like, all, like, the epilogues and stuff, right? There's gonna be an epilogue, right? I, I have no idea, Stel. That's up to them. <laughs> eh? For your information, I never intended to dramatically jump in and help at the last moment like that, but since you guys all refuse to use better equipment like my I dove in sight here, then it's clear that you needed the help. Hee <laughs> hee. Los heroes must have rubbed off on me. Who's the no way? Ren. Now the real savior is the friends we've had all the way. Actually, you know what? You're right. It is the friends we've had all the way. If not for Estelle and Joshua, these two are the real heroes. Special support section, they will get one shot by literally everything. They have literally made a paper mache. Whereas these two are actually decently equipped. I sell all my past regrets and grievances with Crossbell. I enjoyed it, but I think my presence will cause more harm than good, because after all, I am an agent of chaos. And aren't I adorable? Um, yes, you are adorable, Ren, but do you think it's wise to always be moving around with Pater Mare like that? Nonsense! Why can't I have a dun- What's the point of having a dundum if I don't get to use its giant laser cannons? So it's about time to take my leave. I'm gonna go fire my laser cannons since that's really a fortress! Don't try to stop me! <laughs> Ren, don't you don't you dare start a war between Erebony and Crossbell. Two? Ah, uh, all right. I decided to give Crossbell a couple years to figure things out. Yes, Estelle. I'll have you know I'm I'm not ready to be caught just yet. Oh, is Ren like supposed to represent a rabbit? Nope. Sorry, Ren. But the truth is, we've already caught you. <laughs> You may not be right, but we already got you. See? Uh, Estelle, are, are those the... Yes, they're adoption papers. I finally got them signed. But instead of Kia, it's it's got your signature, Ren. My signature? When did that happen? And, well, don't you remember for the time we had you pay for that hat bill when we were saying he and at's at the Italian restaurant in, in Trotsbell Square? Oh, yeah, I had to sign the check. Wait a minute. <laughs> like I said, we already got you. Ha! It's been over a year and a half since I last saw that cute little face of yours. It's been three months since we departed the Burl and came here. Oh, is Redford the Burl Art too? So you're telling me there's always been a million. It's like one of the constants of Trails games. There's always a million. Is that going to be the case? And I, I know you've been watching over us every day since then. We know. Oh, you are uh, staying at the Rosenberg Studio, uh, occasionally doing a crossbow save to play around. The hard part was uh, catching you on the Orbital Network. Well, uh, of course it was. No one would ever be able to catch someone like Kitty. Except us, right? Ren, we know everything there is to know about you. Your past, your sorrow, your pain, your, your chaos. Hey! But also your happiness and everything you love doing. You can't run away from us. Not anymore. You're, this is legally binding. <laughs> legally binding? I thought... I thought you'd give up, like everyone else! After learning about Paradise, I was convinced you would. If I was the same person I was two years ago, I might not have been strong enough to handle it. But after meeting wonderful people like you and Lo, 
I've become a better person. No matter what things happened in the past, good or bad, they're the things that add up to make you who you are today. And the person you are today, <laughs> I can't help but love with every last bit of my heart. Aw, still! Ah. Honestly, yeah, it might be for the best if you return to your family here in Crossbell. But no matter how unreasonable or selfish this may sound, we want you to be a part of our family, Ren. Because quite frankly, we're way too busy to actually... Well, never mind, that's a complete aside. But that's what brought us to Crossbell, and that's where that we decide all over again once we were here. <laughs> I don't understand! Aw, oh, Pater! Pater Mater! No! No! What are you doing? Could it be? So that's it. You've been worried about Ren too. Aw, oh, so Pater Mater's like Lammy that has a heart too. It's not just a mindless thing. Stop! Please! Aw. <laughs> Caught you. Aw. Uh, thank you, Panimator. Seems like the Meister Sir Justin gave you the ability to move on your own. <laughs> Aww. So, the constants of Milliam. They must be... He ridiculously overpowered despite their age. They need to be agents of chaos, and they need to cry. That seems to be like the three constants of Milliam. <laughs> now, we're not gonna let you out of our sight ever again. From here on out, where we go, how we live, what we do, let's figure those things out together. But first, how about we head back to Laverl? I know Tina's been waiting for a while now, waiting for you to come home. <laughs> Ren. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna try to. <laughs> I'm so happy for all of you. <laughs> I'm happy too. Why are you looking at me? I'm not going to cry. An honorable knight doesn't cry. Um, Dubily. I'm sure her the Steel Maiden probably has cried at least once in a while. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm happy for you all, too. <laughs> Didn't think I'd be sharing it here today. Uh, everyone, <laughs> thank you so much for everything. I, I really don't know what to say. I uh, can't imagine how we could ever come close to repaying you. Well, <laughs> actually, Joshua, you guys have more than repaid your debt by just carrying us through this entire final dungeon. Oh, Joshua, we just helped out a little, that's all. <laughs> that is the most accurate line. That's so accurate. I sincerely believe that you two made this possible for the to be off on that. <laughs> That's right, you two made this entire challenge impossible by never giving up on us! <laughs> they legit carry us through this entire last dungeon. Without these two, I don't know what we would have done. <laughs> Joshua, congratulations. I know you'll all be happy together. Thank you, Lloyd. Seeing this, I can't wait to get home to Tia. At raid, Zion the Chief, too. Oh, well, then, what are we waiting for? Let's gotta move on. Yeah. Social support section, prepare withdraw. Our mission may be complete, but we still need to rest the reduced members and escort the civilians to the surface. Let's do that. Wow. Oh. The sunrise. It's beautiful. Sure is. Feel that warmth? Ah. Lloyd! Wait, that voice. It can't be. Oh, it's Tia! Hey! Aww! Tia. Hmm. <laughs> Thank goodness. Lloyd, Ellie, Tio, Randy, you're all okay. Mark. Tia, what are you doing here? Well, looks like we got a whole party here to bring us. Oh, look, and Noelle's here! Oh, it's like everyone we met along the journey, so it's be all support us. That's cool. All the CGF troops within the city faded only moments ago. We knew that could only mean one thing. So we decided to make our way here yourself. My mind said, Dow, did he teleport here or something? That information is confidential. Really, though, the four of you need to teach the girl, that girl some basic manners. When she heard we were coming here, she threw a tantrum, demanding we bring her with us. Yeah, <laughs> you'll say that, but you ended up bringing her anyway. Typical Dudley. 
Hey, Sergey! <laughs> oh, Deputy Commander Bale, Sergeant Major Seeker. <laughs> uh, great job in there, everyone. I have no idea what you did, but I know it must have been hard because... Because you all have, have all sorts of bruises all over your bodies. All the control members of the CGF finally have been free thanks to your efforts. And we also doubt the latest coffee shipment, so... Oh, Noel Seeker should soon be able to resume her duties as usual. And so, we decided to come visit the heroes of the hour. I trust the danger has passed. Yep, ma'am. All those friends that were crawling around have vanished as well. Good thing, too. It made us for an old captain much easier. I'll say, though, it's pretty satisfying tying up all those mafiosos and leaving them in their cells. So, I think the horse part is yet to come. <laughs> Indeed. We'll have to explain the situation to the public and deal with any international issues that may arise. We must also administer the proper care to any CGF members that were affected by the brainwashing. The remain ma Mafia members will probably have to be... Uh... Seeker? Hmm? Have some coffee. Thank you, good commander. You're the best. Oh, that's right! The remain Mafia members will probably have to be restrained for the, the time being. Not to mention, we still have to put together the mountain of evidence related to this case! You can kiss your free time for the next month goodbye, that's for certain. <laughs> Please allow the British Reveal to assist you wherever we can. <laughs> We'd appreciate it. <laughs> yep, looks like once again we're gonna be busy as heck. However, I think the situation has finally taken a turn for the better. You're right. Yeah! <laughs> Lloyd, Ellie, Tio, Randy. I'll be looking forward to seeing the detailed reports for this case. But for now, is everything settled? Oh. <gasps> ah. Yes, sir! <laughs> Good work, team. Well, after all this, I guess I'll finally be able to call you real professionals now. I would have been proud of you. Chief. <laughs> the camera has arrived, everyone. Step aside, folks. Out of my way. Oh, and here comes the Sarah, or the not Sarah. Grace? What? How did you even... <laughs> you think I'd let a stoop this juiciest step my clutches? <laughs> Get real! Anyway, I'm gonna need you all to squeeze in nice and tight. This calls for a group photo. Come on, people. No need to be shy. Well, she is, isn't she? We're going to be in a picture? Yeah, so give her your biggest smile, okay? You got it! Shall we join up, Zeit? Grr. I know, I don't like photos either, but I'm gonna be saying for this, despite not sleeping for days, you can at least spend a few seconds here when you got to nap all day. Grr. Um, we'll just get out of your way. Yeah, it's probably best we're not on the shot. Oh, the heck with that, get your butts in here, you carried this team. You too, little missy. Well, if you insist, just an FYI, I'm going to mess up the photo. What a waste of time. Oh, it's not that so bad once in a while. All right, Deputy Commander Bales and Chief Sergeant can get in on this side. Okay, fine. Hmm, I hope it turns out well. Aw, oh, that's a that's a that's a cute picture. I I I, I hope uh, if they had the chance, to, if they had like the budget to actually like draw out the entire photo, I think that'd be really cool. Here we go, guys. Put on your smile. Say cheese. Did they draw it out? I oh, didn't draw it out, but it's, okay, it's still a nice picture. Ah. In the wake of the D-34G cult incident, Crossbell was left in disarray. The Mafia and Guardsmen being controlled through an illegal drug told Miss Don that the May officials, including Speaker Hartman, all of it was made public by the Crossbell Times. It was shortly said to be the largest scandal in Crossbell's history. Wow. Mary Mattel responded by dismissing the police commissioner and the Guardian Force commander. Oh, okay. Following that, he demanded a full investigation be conducted by Deputy Commander Bales and the Chiefs of the CBD's divisions. Tipped of Dudley, no longer held back by corruption, was able to bring light not only a connection between the cult members of the Imperial faction, but also one involving the Republican faction. With every arrest, the citizens' distrust of Crossbell's political circles grew until it reached a boiling point. Ooh. It was at this time that the IBC CEO, Dieter Kreis, took the opportunity to announce his candidacy for mayor. Ah! He publicly pledged to heal the political system and follow the ideals of Mayor McDowell, who had formally announced his decision to retire. 
Before leaving office, the mayor also announced that special elections for the seats of the arrested Diet members will be held as well. Heads from all backgrounds are expected to vie for the spot of Speaker of the Diet. And one month after the incident, Mayor McDowell summoned us to the City Hall's reception hall. Hey! Stella and Joshua decide to return to a girl with Ren. Ah. Though the Bracer Drill's manpower was cut, the recent political reforms will surely allow CBD to make up for it. Hopefully, we can help them out in the future, too. Before leaving, Ren reminded us of some difficult questions that still remained. The truth behind what happened 500 years ago, why Kia was at the Schwarz auction, and the true identity of whoever killed my brother, Guy Bannings. Unfortunately, Ren didn't have the answers to any of those mysteries. Ah. See, I was just messing with ya! <laughs> but that's fine. After all, it's my, no, our duty to find the truth. Promising to reunite someday, we gave our farewells and saw them off. And? After the end of the mayoral election, the day we returned to our regular duties, in the entryway of the special sports section building, Kia stood, holding a brand new badge. Oh? I don't know. You sure you're right? Oh, she finally going to school! I mean, it's her first day. It might be better if I tagged along. I'm the readiest. I already memorized the way there and everything. Besides, Rio and Henri will be with me. Well, like you worry too much. But, honestly, you really are a little overprotective. If you know that, you were a kid too once. Didn't you want to walk to Sunday school with just your friends? <laughs> That's beside the point. No, it's not, Mr. Bannings. You say that, yet I'm sure you're just as nervous, aren't you, Ellie? Don't say that to you! Well, well, as one of her guardians, it's only right I'd be a little nervous. Heesh, come on, all you worry -worn. stop right on key this parade. No one hunts after her anymore, anyway. So why don't we steer off with a spot? I feel like- No, don't say that, Randy. It's going to happen again, isn't it? It's going to happen again! What? I mean, yeah, I get that, but I think I finally understand how parents feel when their child leaves home. Heh. <laughs> You guys already forget? You've got to meet with the new mayor today. If you don't want to be late, you better head out soon. <laughs> That's right. Speaking of that, you already know what you want to talk with us about, don't you? Well, that exactly is, I wonder. <laughs> I think I'll leave the explanation to him. Best you hear it straight from the source, anyway. Alright, everyone. Today will be a new start for all of you. So out there, give it your all. Understood. Oh man, ever slow day, is there? You should be used to the face by now, Andy. <sighs> I'm sure you'll have a great first date, Kia. We'll walk you there part of the way, okay? Okay! Ah, Cute! Let's go! Cute! Princess Kia! Alright! That was Trails from Zero. Uh, that's Special Support Squad, Ch Copper Knuckles, and that's the main character of the game. Wow. Really, really, really well put together game. I really liked this game. Like, I also want to say that final boss fight was really cool. Like, I thought I liked the fact that they actually made it so that the characters would basically they took away like parts of the arena to wrap phases of the boss battle so that you had to reposition or else completely lose your character for the rest of the battle. I thought that was a really cool idea. It's something I hadn't seen in Trails of Cold Steel 1 or Trails of Cold Steel 2, so I thought that was a cool way to mix it up for that second phase. I also like the fact that it definitely felt like the final boss was a, um... It definitely tested everything we learned up to that point. Like, the first phase was very much testing our ability to deal with um, multiple opponents and a, a, a human-type enemy. And then the second phase was testing our ability to basically deal with spellcasting type of foe, and it's as well as someone who just deals a ludicrous amount of damage on hit and has S-Crafts. Well, actually, they had S-Crafts in, uh, in both phases, but still really, really cool. And then having that third phase be sort of like a, a finale, just finish, like, go all out, finish everything off. Really, really cool. Uh, Final Dungeon, very well put together. Um, I felt that I liked that all the bosses we ended up facing in the Final Dungeon. And just... I have to say, like, I still think I like Trail of Cold Steel 2 a little bit more than this game, but I'm saying that acknowledging the fact that this game is 
you know, it was the start of a duology, whereas Trails of Cold Steel 2 had Trails of Cold Steel 1 to build off of. So, if I were to compare this to Trails of Cold Steel 1, again, I think, personally, I like this game a lot more than Trails of Cold Steel 1. Now, don't get me wrong, I like Trails of Cold Steel 1. I love Class 7, I love the story, I also liked, especially towards the end, some of the fights there, but I, I said it earlier, and I'll bring it, this up again, I feel like Trails from Zero was definitely a shorter game, but it felt like less time was wasted. And what I mean by that is it felt like there was a lot more interconnectedness between the side, uh, between the story and the characters and the side quests. And I felt like there was less fluff. So like side quests and Trails of Cold Steel One were constant, were very frequently just you know, random fetch quest or random item collection or just doing a random task. That doesn't, uh, but the key thing, and to be fair, you do random tasks as well as the special support squad, but there's a big difference with a lot, like with, I'd say the overwhelming majority of side quests and Trails of Cold Steel, there isn't really much character building in terms of the characters performing the side quests. They're just kind of doing a task. Whereas in this game, a lot of the side quests actually had some really good character moments. And it wasn't just for our main party either. Sometimes it was some really good character moments for some of the for some of the side cast. Like I remember, you guys remember that side quest where we were trying to catch that thief that was trying to, to do something in Ilya Platera's run, and that ended up being like a, a character moment for both uh, Ilya Platera and uh, Ritzia. Like that was so cool. And similarly, like the side quests with um you did both these separate stuff that just more sad for the one. And that is a fair point. Like, Cold Steel 2 could not have been the incredible masterpiece that it was if not for Cold Steel 1 laying the foundation. I'm just saying, if I'm comparing this game to Cold Steel 1, yes, they both set foundations, but I like the way this game set it up better. And the reason I like that is because it constantly felt like, even with a lot of the side quests, that we were getting more characterization for either the main party or the side characters. And that was something I felt was really, really cool. That, that made this game stand out compared to Trails of Cold Steel 1. And then beyond that, I really, really like... I mean, I, I love the characters in this game. I think the main four were really, really well written. Every single one of them. Like, I mean, with Flash 7, obviously it's a bigger cast, so there's more room for me to not like certain characters. But here, though, it's like we have... Um, also, OMG Floofy, what? <laughs> okay, uh, but... Uh... Like, you've explored all across all the first half of Chapter 2, while in Cold Steel, every chapter's a new state. That is true. So, I feel like Cold Steel 1 does a better job of building, like, doing world building for the environments and locations. Whereas Trails from Zero does a better job, I think, of building on the characters. And if I had to choose one or the other, again, this is, uh... I'm only saying this in the context of if these were individual games and not like having sequels. I would much prefer a game that spends a lot of time building up its characters and really exploring them and maybe not going as deep with the with a, a bunch of different other areas. Whereas, oh, oh, that's the symbol. So there's Kia in the ball. The Legend of Heroes, Trails from Zero, has reached its conclusion, but the story's not yet over. We'll see you again at Journey's End. Ugh. Interesting. But yeah, let me um you know, let me continue my thoughts here. So Trails what was I saying? So Trails from Zero had fewer locations to go to, obviously, than Trails of Cold Steel does. So Trails of Cold Steel literally spans an entire like large country, whereas Crossbell State is really a small confined space by comparison. But if I'm being honest, like because I think due to its threat, because the characters are so well are, are so well explored in this game. It's not just the main characters, but also the side characters. It actually made it a lot more engaging to go back to some areas multiple times. Like, I remember, like, any time we had a side quest at Tandem Great, I always got side. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get to see uh, Noel and Detector and uh, Luke, uh, Deputy Commander Bales again. That'll be fun. Or, like, going to the medical college to see some of the characters down there, like Cecile. I mean, even if I don't the biggest fan of Cecile, at least, you know, seeing other name main major name characters down there, and so on and so forth. Like that. Like this this game definitely made a great use of its space. Like I never I, I never felt like 
why am I going this way? Like, no, it always felt like if I was going somewhere, it felt purposeful. And that is like, again, what it ties back to what I was saying earlier. This game may be shorter than Trails of Cold Steel, but it uses its time so much better. That's the best way to describe it. Now, say you said that some other things about this game. One area I will critique this game a little bit, and this I think is more so just to do with how the, the game used to be structured compared to Trails of Cold Steel. This game's art system makes a lot less sense. Like, I got, kind of got used to it later, but even like you saw at the end game, I'm like, okay, clearly Craft Art's the way to go. Do I have Adamant side guard? And I didn't. And like the mere fact that I didn't know that off the top of my head, I think should speak volumes to how convoluted it is to just have to add up a bunch of different crystal numbers to get certain spells. Like, I think that is definitely one area where Trails of Cold Steel is superior to this game, is that Trails of Cold Steel innovated on the combat system to make it more clear. Like, on Trails of Cold Steel, I can tell at a glance what spells someone has just by what master quartz they have and which quartz they have equipped, and that's that. In this game, it is a lot more obtuse. Like, I would have to be like, okay, first, how many crystals do I have? Then I have to check the guide. And then I have to go back and forth between multiple menus. It just gets really confusing, man. <laughs> like, it gets really confusing. Um, so that was one area. Now, to be fair, I'm not going to uh, knock it too much here just because I understand this was earlier in the series, so they hadn't innovated on that yet. I get that. I'm just pointing out that if I'm comparing the two, that's one area where I feel like Trails of Full Steel is a little bit better, is that that was a lot clearer. Um, let's see what else. But besides that little, besides, uh, okay, another nitpick, the cooking is way too inconsistent. Like seriously, like even with the orbments that are supposed to make you more consistently cook specific dishes, it really felt like it just didn't help that much. Like in Trails of Cold Steel 1 or 2, if I equip the orbments that improves the odds of cooking like a supreme dish or a peculiar dish, it works like 70% of the time. Here, on the other hand, it, it felt like even when I had it equipped, it was only happening like maybe 10% of the time. Or at least there were times where it felt that way. It was really frustrating. Um, but besides those two nitpicks, I think they did a fantastic job with the combat in this game. Especially because we had so many bosses that were actually tied directly to the story in meaningful ways that were built up over the course of the chapter. In Trails of Cold Steel 1, there are just way too many what I'll call Monster of the Day bosses, where the only reason an op, uh, we're facing a certain boss is because the developers decided we needed an obstacle at that point, and they, they didn't want to write any sort of foreshadowing for it. Whereas in this game, I feel like in every single chapter, the major boss was foreshadowed in a meaningful way, and is tied directly to the story in a way more so than most of the bosses in Trails of Cold Steel 1. And I really, really like that. Like, to me, Ritzia, really memorable boss fight. Garcia, really, really memorable boss fight. Um, then we even have... Um, even that droid we fought uh, that was defending the way into Rabusha's head course, I still found that memorable because it tied... Like, it tied much, so much more directly with the mystery and hinted at what was to come. Whereas in Trails of Cold Steel, we have... <laughs> We, you know, giant spoder boss that just comes out of nowhere. We had resurrected dra a bone, uh, you know, skeleton dragon because why not? And then, of course, my personal favorite one to poke fun at the the required quest we had, where it's just we're exploring a mine, then out of nowhere that giant mushroom just jumps out out of nowhere. <laughs> just a whole seal one out a lot of bosses like that. I really, really like the major bosses in this game. The South Rose foreshadowed Dark Souls. Okay, fair, fair. Dark Souls Shoals foreshadowed that. But, like, even, like, the Warhounds in... I think that, like, actually, here's a, a perfect comparison. Both um, Trails of Cold Steel 1 and Crossbell, well, Trail from Zero, have a Warhounds major boss fight. You want to know why I like the Warhounds boss better in, in this game than I do in, in Trails of Cold Steel 1? It's because in Trails of Cold Steel 1, they literally just mentioned, oh, by the way, release the Hounds at, like, the very end of the chapter. They never they never built that up. Whereas in this game, the Warhounds were literally what we were investing in the entire chapter. So, <laughs> so it actually made sense. But yeah, um, let's see, what else do I want to say about this game? Oh, yeah, I, I can't forget. 
the the music in this game is top tier like i i even before this, uh, playing this game i had listened to like dane over the barrier and the roaring version of dane over the barrier so many times on loop but like i even when i started playing this game i was pleasantly surprised at just how many good songs are in this game like i think a light illuminating the depths especially might be my favorite dungeon theme of any trails game i played so far and because up to this point like the art of the lore of Antonis Street is that Dark Souls takes place in Dreamer Hollow Dark. True, true. But my, my point is, like, I thought Phantasmal Blaze was, was going to be my favorite for a while, but I think, like, a light illuminating the depths just slightly edged it out, and that's saying something. Because Phantasmal Blaze for Trails of Cold Steel 2 is phenomenal. And uh, the boss theme is really, really, really good, too. Like, I honestly think, like, the final boss theme of Trails of Cold Steel 1 is really good. It's got this nice dark orchestral feel but honestly like the final boss theme of this game the way it's triumphant and has like phases where it's like we have a lull and then it's like we're running again it's like it's so so good man it's so so good <laughs> and even some of the other themes like uh i think um i think uh where's some of the other themes i really liked in this game the the main theme the, the main theme of this game on the main menu also also really really good i like even before i started playing this game i just went to the main menu just hearing that theme for the first time i was like oh this story is going to be dark but it's really there uh who is my least favorite character oh okay so who is my least favorite character in this game uh let's see i would probably say it's either Ilya platere or cecile and granted even if they're my least favorite characters in this game, they still, I still think they're fairly well-written characters. I was saying, but even so, I'd say uh, Ilya Platera or Cecile, and the reasons, of course, because of their various comments and how they behave towards Lloyd at certain times. But besides that, um, yeah, got lots of fantastic characters. In oh, actually, wait, I take it back. We... We have Ilya Platera, we have, it'd be a three-way tie between Ilya Platera, Cecile, and then whoever is not, um, whoever is not Alyssa Reinford. <laughs> Are you sure Joe Confessi is the main villain? I honestly thought he was pretty well read. Like, I like the fact that if you paid close attention to Joe Kim, you could, you could, you could see the writing on the wall, so to speak, without being super obvious. Maribel, that's right. So, the thing about Joe Kim is, I thought he was sus- from the like the first time we met him in chapter uh in chapter what was it chapter one yeah in chapter one and the reason that was was because i noticed the character portrait i was you know i was really invested in the mystery and i decided to actually read his text like his you know his quote-unquote fluff dialogue and he brought up the drud like he literally brought up the drud in chapter one so I didn't, you know, so that kind of, that's why he was like one of my major suspects when I was trying to predict, all right, who's the main bad guy going to be here? But at the same time, I still thought that was a, that was a pretty well written twist because it's like the hints are there. Like the fact that there are long spans of time when he's not at the hospital, all that detail about the drugs and how, again, that whole thing with the drugs was never resolved in chapter one i brought that up i'm like you know we found out about the warhouse but like there's still the, like this merchant guy and this doctor and they're doing something suspicious you know so it was built up from there and then also like when you look at it in hindsight that scene where he's saying oh well why don't you just like tsa for an overnight checkup it gets a lot creepier when you realize just what he intended to do and use tia for like some kind of i don't know some kind of divine demonic thing and then i also think it's helped by the fact that um let's see how do i compare jokum to other villains because that's actually I, I feel like having a, a, a really really well written antagonist is also very important to a game so how do i compare them to some of the other villains i've seen in trails of cold steel i think let's see Actually, this is a genuinely good question. Who do I think is my favorite antagonist in the, that I've seen so far in the Trails games? Hmm. I think my... I think at this point, my favorite antagonist would probably just have to default to Crow. But the only reason I'm saying that is because... Because Crow had such an amazing arc going from 
like hidden antagonist to basically a redeemed anti-hero by the end very very fantastically written but i think crow's kind of in a lead of his own in terms of, of villains so if we like removed crow and just look at it from like all the different bad guys i honestly think jokem dunter's got um i might yeah I, yeah jokem dunter i think he's more interesting than the at least what i've seen so far from the rest of um the imperial liberation fronts and i also think he's more interesting than um than dude cayenne since what's um of the three games he played i think crow is the best in task and Jotun is the best villain oh that's an interesting way to put it that that is a that is a very interesting way to put it because crow is an antagonist like by the end he you know he decides to inspire class seven with his last words where Shokin Dunter, he was consumed by the evil that he was pursuing. So yeah, I, I would generally agree with that statement. I think, you know, of all the villains I've seen so far, I think Jokin Dunter is the best villain that isn't a redeemable antagonist, whereas Crow was the best antagonist, at least so far. Obviously, there's other games. We'll, we'll see what the other games have, but Jokin Dunter, you know, in terms of, like, how to, do, how to write, like, just a purely despicable villain, like, I think they did a really good job with him here. And it really helps with the fact that I think a really well-written villain needs to see themselves as the hero of their own story. And Joachim Dunter definitely saw in that. You did that Dooblee is the best at tennis. <laughs> Thank you, Sputkip. Listen, Dooblee is fantastic, but she's in a completely different league of her own, okay? Dooblee is in a different league. Exactly. I'm untouchable. I wouldn't say that, Dooblee. Hey! But yeah, uh, let's see. I would say, like, if I want... A, I would say just pure hardly evil villains that I've seen so far. Joan Dunter's the best. If I want villains that can be funny, definitely Doobly. Because, <laughs> you know, there there have been several villains so far in the Trails games that can be funny. Like, even, like, Fee's dads, they're pretty funny, but I think Doobly's funnier. Um, We've got... And we have, I mean, I honestly think... it. I, you all know who my least favorite villain is, Baron Blue Blanc. Just, he just causes chaos, he's annoying, he exists. Like, to me, I'd say Baron Blue Blanc is my least favorite villain slash antagonist I've seen so far. Whereas, John Dunster would be my favorite so far. So, you know, that, that's another, you know, positive for this game, is that it had a villain that I felt was memorable despite being pure evil. Um, and also, his final boss fight really did him a lot of wonders, too, because the final boss fight reinforced the themes of this game. You're seeing him being literally consumed by the drugs, which are representative of, cor of the corruption that's steeped here, that's steeped here in Crossbell. Yeah, the Trails does a really good job taking conflicts with large states and making them personal for the protagonists. I agree. Like, even like the, even for like the less well-written villains that I've seen, like Baron Blue Blanc, they still manage to time in in meaningful ways, so it's for meaningful growth reasons for our characters. Whether he's trolling Class 7 so that Class 7 becomes a lot more... There, or Close to the 2 is about stopping a civil war, but Class 7 really just cares about reuniting with Crow. And that shows, like, you know, they're kind of doing both. Though, obviously, Class 7 by themselves aren't going to stop the civil war. They literally have to play a role in that, and that's important. Like, they can be part of a much larger conflict where still having their own personal goals. Um, and it wasn't just reuniting with Crow, it was reuniting with everyone, because they were all split up, you know? That whole, one of the things that made Trails of Cold Steel 2 so special is that whole second half of the game where you have the airship and you can go find students and, and from the that you met in the first game and recruit them, and then they actually, almost all of them, have some meaningful gameplay-related thing they can do on the ship that makes them actually, you know, matter beyond just lore reasons. Like, that's... That was one of the most special things about Trials of Cold Steel 2. Um, also, uh, let's see, what's... Uh, what else do I like about this game? I love all the side characters. Like, I, I love... I mean, I, I like the guest party members. Like, I never felt like there was a guest party member that didn't make any sense or was kind of there. Like... In Trails of Cold Steel 2, don't get me wrong, I think Tobol's a fine character, but, like, did he really need to have his his own whole fleshed-out experience? We we barely saw him in Trails of Cold Steel 1, and by the end of Trails of Cold Steel 2, he didn't really do a whole lot besides just kind of being there for Reen when he, in his darkest hour. 
and that's only because he just happened to be in the area, so to speak. I don't, and similarly, like, you know, Sharon's cool and all, but like, why does she get more screen time than Toa? Um, and Thomas, you, you rant about that all the time, but uh, yeah, that's a fair point. I won't, I won't rehash that right here, <laughs> but my, my point still stands. It's like, at least, like, there were fewer guest characters here than there were in, like, Trails of Cold Steel 2, obviously, just Trails of Cold Steel because the scope is much larger. In Trails of Cold Steel 1, in terms of guest characters, I think there was Crow, there's Sarah, there's, um, oh, why am I, Angelica. Was there anyone else that was a guest character? Uh, I'm not remembering. Hey, Jay, welcome back. We're just uh, reminiscing. Uh, I'm, I'm gushing about how much I, I like this game. Basically, Trails from Zero, I liked it more than Trails of Cold Steel 1. I still think Trails of Cold Steel 2 is better than this game, but then again, Trails of Cold Steel 2 had Trails of Cold Steel 1 to build off of, so we'll see uh, eventually what Trails 2 is there is like. But, oh, well, I'm, I'm sorry, Dan, off topic. I'm, what was I talking about? I was talking about... Uh, Tulsa 2 is about to stop. Yeah, okay, you, you mentioned that, so I did you mention that. Okay. So you get mad a bit. You think the reason Tovel gets so much free time is because he's the main character of Cornelia, a book series you collect in Sky FC, and he's in a comic with Estelle and Joshua that shows why they end up at Crossbow Zero. Wait, really? Wow, okay then. So... Spectrum, allow me to ask you a question. Is that hinted at at all in Trails of Cold Steel 2 if you were just talking to Tovel or something like that? Or for, I, I'm saying that as like for someone who hasn't played that. Uh, like, on the, like that just shows, once again, Neon Falcon has the best world building I've seen of any video game company that I've ever played. Like, and even this game really showed that. Like, how cool is it that in the final dungeon of this game, the what I'm assuming is the protagonist and, like, the, the lead support character of the first game that I haven't even played yet, I just recognize them from the box art, come here and, like, working alongside your characters. Like, that's so cool! How cool is that? It's like almost like a passing of the torch moment. <laughs> But yeah, like, I feel like if, if that if that kind of, like, if they're, uh, in Cold Steel 1, you find Sarah Tobel and Mitz, uh, and they talk about how Mitz wrote the book loosely based on real events uh, during the school festival. Okay, is that a mandatory conversation or an optional conversation, Swipekip? Because I feel like, here's the thing. I think I, I love the rich world building of the Trails games. Like, I think it's one of the strongest things about these games. But you think it's optional. But the thing is, it's like not everyone is going to take the time to read every single piece of dialogue for every single NPC. And I'm saying that as someone who really appreciates your writing in video games. Like, I think this is phenomenal. I think it's really cool what they've done here. But I, in saying that, I also recognize that I do not have, at least with what I'm doing, I don't necessarily have the time to read every single piece of dialogue and still do, you know, still accomplish a challenge run in a meaningful span of time. Um, I think, it, like, I would, th I think it would have been really cool if for Tobel, they had, like, maybe one or two scenes where he says, like, yeah, I used to be in liberal, I'm, like, kind of a legend or something like that. And just make subtle references to it, the stuff like that happened in the past, like um, Estelle and Joshua in this game. I think Estelle and Joshua in this game were a great example. Well, okay, not in liberal, but you get what I mean. In Cornelia, the point is reference the fact that he helped some characters in that respect. Uh, but whereas in this game, Estelle and Joshua. They clearly brought up a lot of events that happened in Liberal. And they did it in a way to hopefully not be too spoilery, but they also likely tied it back in a way where if I had played the Trails in the Sky games, then I would have been like, hey, that's a nice nod to that. Like, even in this game, like, the moment I saw Dr. Gunter get, like, white hair and red eyes like Reen did, and he explained to me, like, it's because of Gnosis, that just, like, blew my mind. It's just like a galaxy brain moment. I'm like, is this what happened to Reen? Like, that's so cool. And it's something that, that and I haven't seen any other series do in a way quite like Neon Falcon does. 
He'd actually pull up show up in the dance control to one. And, I mean, like, even if he didn't, like, if it's in... Okay, I guess that's a fair point. I guess he wasn't in a, a previous stand, but that's... Okay. Enough... All right, enough of me criticizing Toval aside. Let's get... That's a... We should be talking less about Trails. I, I like how, like, every time I talk about Trails games, I inevitably talk gush about Trails of Cold Steel 2. <laughs> so let's, uh... Let's go back to Trails from Zero. So, we talked about the characters. I think, um... Let's see, how would I describe? I would say if Class 7 is like... In, in many ways, Class 7 and the Special Sports Squad, they're both, they both grow to have family dynamics, like deep bonds. But I feel like Class 7 is about being young and growing up, at, whereas uh, the Special Support Squad is about growing up and learning how to get your life together. And, and learn about what matters in like adulthood and as someone who is you know graduated from college been in the workforce for several years at this point i just at this point in my life i relate probably more to the trials uh, holes and tribulations that uh the special support squad are going through in this game than i would have with class seven when they were still at school and that let's see it's helpful still for all the games had a book series you can collect that four shadow things come. Really? That's really cool, Spud. Yep. That's a that's a good use of multimedia to four shadow things in games. But uh what was I saying? Oh yeah. Uh so for And I'm saying that with full acknowledging that like all the stuff I see class seven doing, like I can relate so much to some of the, the struggles I've seen them go through. Especially Reen and Toa with um with with like the struggles they have as young leaders like i relate to that so 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 much in my line of work yes i am constantly managing projects and, and doing having to take on leadership roles but yeah anyway uh back to this game though i thought it was really cool how it how um they conveyed kind of like the struggles of adulthood in this kind of situation and being kind of jaded with your position and your position in life scene like you have all like you're, you're imagine like you're fresh out of the academy you have all these bright ideas about how you're going to change the world things like that and then you 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 know you, you step foot where you're going to go and you, you come back down to earth into reality and reality is a lot harsher than what you expected like i think this game hailed ha, ha, like the themes about that and and like trying to find your way when things aren't living up to your expectations especially when they're very dire like they are in crossbell like the level of, of corruption in crossbell is really 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 heavy but i think it also really serves as a poignant reminder about that how you may not be able to make the change that you want to see in the world today you might not even be able to make it tomorrow but you're never going to find out how much you can change it's unless you keep pushing forward to ch until you find so that maybe one day you find the opportunity to get over those barriers and it's i think it's a really powerful message it also shows up the importance of not losing heart and being con uh, and, and like being consumed by the darkness around you so to speak you need to be able to no matter how much darkness surrounds you you have to be able to maintain that light in yourself for as long as you can because if you don't you end up like dr gunter and you just become consumed by it. Whereas if you are able to maintain, uh, you know, to grow wiser, to recognize that you'll never meet your exact ideals, but perhaps you can meet some of them. And then just learning how to live with everything else. And then this is all, these are all very mature topics. I think this game handled that very well. And also it showed how, it showed uh, the, the joys that come at least it, it it hints at the joys that come with if um you know raising a young kid like obviously what class i oh, not what class what the social sports squad did with trying to raise tia here is nowhere near the same as like you know raising a newborn child hold from from birth all the way hey till they're out of high school and going to college or going into the workforce but it was still nice to see just how quickly their perspective on life changed the moment Tia came into the, you know, came into their lives. Like before that, they were still, they were still a bit jaded and, yeah, and, you know, still struggling to make their way through things here. And then all of a sudden they see this, you know, this young, innocent kid who they have, who, who, who clearly, you know, who needs, 
to have the opportunity to grow in a safe environment and suddenly it gives them a renewed sense of purpose because they're trying to make Crossbell a better place for for young kids like Tia. And I think that's also a really powerful message how like as an adult you're trying to you're trying to give back to yeah, found family is goaded. Agreed, agreed. This was like they handled found family in this game so so well. And and I think found family is also a big theme of this game because it's not just Tia and class, you know, not, well, I keep saying class seven. It's not just Tia and the special support squad. It was also Hostel, Joshua, and Ren. Like the fact that at both uh, groups of protagonists here had a similar sort of character development going on also sh also shows that they're at similar stages of life where they're they have that sort of found family situation going on <clears throat> okay so I, i'm looking at the time here i think i've i've talked for this for uh, about like 20 or 30 minutes uh what what are my takeaways from this game i would say would i recommend this game to someone who just wants to play a, an rpg of some kind I would say, I would honestly say, if I had to choose between starting with this game or starting with Trails of Cold Steel 1, I think Trails of Cold Steel 1 is easier. So, uh, so it might not be, and it's a lot more accessible with its combat system and stuff. So if you're looking for uh, not to be overwhelmed by an RPG system, you might want to start there. But if I were to look at it from the perspective of I want to play a game that I know um, that I'm going to enjoy from start, start to finish whereas and not have a lot of fluff in it, I would honestly choose this game over Trails of Cold Steel 1. Like, I think, I think this would make a great introductory game for the series Be just because of how well put together it is. Like, it really shows off a lot of what Trails can be and is. And it also does... Um, you know, as convoluted as the art system is in this game, I can't deny that the combat system is pretty well fleshed out. And also, again, that final boss is also phenomenal. Like, I really think if I compare that final boss to the... Well, this is not the fairest comparison because Trails of Cold Steel has Chrono Burst, and I really use that a lot in the end. But I think Jodem Gunter was just the perfect final boss for a first game in a multi-part series like it was long enough to be like it clearly tested everything we had learned up to that point whereas against like whatever the giant phantom was in trails of cold steel one it was just kind of a giant enemy and it has like unique uh gimmick where it looked like eat your eat your friends so that you couldn't use them for a turn but I feel like Jordan Gunter is like he tested everything you learned up to that point. All your various different kinds of combat skills. He also tested your positioning. I thought that was a really clever move in that, in that last fight in phase two to make so that if you're standing in the wrong spot at the wrong time, you'll just be taken out of the, out of the map entirely. I thought that was really, really, really clever. A really, really clever way to say, hey, have you learned to use the move button? If you haven't, you're, you're going to be in for some trouble. <coughs> But yeah, fantastic game. Really can't wait to play Trails to Azure at some point. Like, I'm just going to tell you all right now, whenever we come back to Trails, Trails to Azure is the next Trails game we're challenge running. Like, I want to see the conclusion of this story. I want to see how far we can get because not having Chrono Burst made this a lot more challenging and also uh, very, very, very fun. Which means we have to use so many different tactics to overcome the various challenges like Corner Strat and various foods and even sometimes just waiting to have the right party member to stop what time we're at the start you also like how there's different ways to beat the final boss that's also very true like i still despise the fact that they just make everything just immune to all the status effects and kind of defeat the point of having all those different status effects moves but even so like i still like the fact that the way the boss was structured it gave room for like your strategy bm is to split the party on both sides and so he can't hit you with your AOA attacks. And, and that's, you know, that's the first strategy. And like in my, in when I was doing it in this section, I actually kept, you know, it was by accident, but Tio was kind of in the back there and that actually helped a lot because I think like in his, you know, the first part of his second phase, his, his S-Craft doesn't hit the entire screen. So it actually meant that Tio was just out of range. 
and that allowed us to you know come back and recover from that so and i also think the fact that they decided to um make the second like in the first phase it was all about aoe attacks and like line attacks for sure like there were just so many aoe attacks whereas in the second phase yes there's aoe attacks but i feel like the boss more or more so likes to just go for like a massive punch that only hits one enemy well, sorry that only hits one person which deals like an enormous amount of damage like i thought that was actually a really smart move because it, again it's it's testing your knowledge of all the different gameplay systems it handled that so so well so a new day for crossbell hey clear the day on nightmare difficulty to complete the finale yep we did heart yes got three achievements in one i sure many has been lot um yes we need to save clear data so we can carry over to our next playthrough All right, I'm glad there will be some information carried over. Ooh, nice. We're seeing the central crossbell. We're in extras here. Ah, Tia! Yay! It's the extras menu. This is the best thing ever. Yay! Ah! Use your achievement points to unlock neat bonuses. Oh, this is true. Oh, we have character illustrations. Bye bye. Wait, no. <gasps> Let me see. Can I not? No! What? Oh! 1500, 1500? Well, I think this lets you see the character. Right? Oh, how's this work? Do we like get points every time we, um, every time we do a playthrough or? Not well, the visual menu. I still have the character menu, to, why not? I had a lot. You're still contributing to my theory, Kia, that you're somehow a robot by, by doing this, but whatever. Yo, go, Randy. It's Lot. Aw, this is like the cutest thing. Look at this shit. I, it's cool to see the, the combat art. Since, and there's Lloyd in his, his outfit with like when he wore the glasses. This is cool. I like this. We're seeing all, all the different artworks. Let's see Ellie. That there's Ellie in when she was at Revue, and that Revue shed the Schwarz auction. Oh, actually, we could see like Tio and Randy in their outfits, what they look like. Aw, Tio looks adorable! Look at her! I ain't say that like hairs for this one. She has one of the fourth wall adorable you are! Yes, and I'm all for it. Ow, oh, and this was my other outfit I had in my, like that one scene. Alright, what about you, Randy? What would, I'm guessing you have been really dapper, like wearing Tetsido and stuff. Yeah, look at Randy! That's a great outfit! Good job, man. All right, anything with Wazy? Oh yeah, Wazy had his outfits too. Uh, Noel? Does Noel really have an alternate outfit? Oh yeah, that's right, I forgot about that. She has that adorable cat outfit. That's, that's true. Man, they really did a great job with the artwork in this game. Dudley? <laughs> he definitely has not wanted portrait. Yes, just I'm, I'm, I'm with the straight and narrow, of course. Of course, uh, it's, it, we all know it's you, Ritzia. Stop hiding it. Come on, no, no, no. Stop trolling me, game. We all know who it is. Come on. What about you, Estelle? Estelle has one outfit. I only need one outfit, because my outfit rocks. And same with Joshua, he's got one outfit. Uh, Jeep's got one outfit. I don't know why she wears a cute hat. Fair enough, Kia. I think she has one one outfit, right? There's me. There's me. He went when I was found. Let's see, what about you, Zeitz? Zeitz just kind of exists. Cecile! Yeah, Cecile does have multiple outfits. She has her nurse's outfit, and she has... Uh, when she's, um... Off of work, I guess. Uh, Arius? Arius is so cool. Ah, uh, Shizuku! She has multiple outfits. Shizuku was adorable! <laughs> Let's see here. All right, chat, chat. All right, here's a question for you. Now that we have all the menus here, what's your favorite character design? Not character, just design. Like, out of all the characters here, because we're looking at all the artwork, let me know what your favorite character design was. Let's see, here's Wazy. Not Wazy, there's, there's Walt. There's Ilya. She has multiple outfits. There's the Langer Performance outfit. Then we have Ritzia. <laughs> Ritzia was a fantastic character. Like, I can, I, I understand now, at least in, in somewhat, why she was the person helping Lloyd. Not only would she be, like, the among the most stable, she's also just... <laughs> the, what's interesting about Ritzia is Ritzia somehow manages to be endearing, competent, dangerous, 
mysterious and a troll all in one, and it doesn't feel forced. Like, how they did that, that, that that's just so impressive to me. Like, this is so many things. And then we're his performance outfit. Let's see. Then we have Fran, who also has a adorable outfit. And also, chat, remember that side quest where Fran was meeting up with that other guy who uh, did some characterization for her and how much she cares about her sister. Really, really interesting. Deputy Commander Vale's really cool character. Definitely uh, Claire before there was Claire. Love how she says, it's me, when you have her over here. Wait, she does hold on while you're right. Wait, wait. It's me. Oh, that's such an adorable little attention to detail. He has the vest. Must protect. Let's see. Okay, the, the, I, I take it back. We found my least favorite character in the game, chat. Here she is. Easily the worst character in this game. <laughs> Rip Anton. Yep, yeah, Rip Anton. Poor Anton. Anton deserved better. He deserved better. Okay, but anyway. I mean, I honestly think it's just because this character is basically the star of this game. <laughs> she's not a horrible character. Like, I understand what she does. Like, she's a reporter, of course, but... She's still very much... She has the Sarah-isms. See, there's Mr. Grimwood. He's not a cool design. Uh, Jonah is... I mean, his outfit kind of looks like millions. That's something I pointed out in the past. Well, there's, you know, there's Dr. Gunter, the, the antagonist of the hour. And honestly, like, this is a cool outfit. You gotta admit, Chad, it's a really cool outfit. Definitely makes him look very, very menacing. Um, and that, of course, is super form, which, again, it's like... The, oh, sorry, sorry. The, um, the transformation of that is... That reminds me so much... Oh, I just noticed, Chad. That's such... I didn't even realize. I think his hair gets slightly darker when he's not in his Dutch outfit. Like, I might just be seeing things, but I think it's, no, not darker, slightly brighter, and then it's super bright like this. Like, it's almost as if, like, the more you learn about him, like, the more evil he becomes. Like, that's just such a cool little visual attention detail. Fun fact, Anthony shows up at the end of Cold Steel 2 and tries to date Sharon. With about the same results. Yeah, I, I don't remember doing that side quest either. I don't remember if that was a hidden side quest or not. But, like, I mean, Cheryl would probably make him disappear. There's Mary McDowell. Really cool character. Then we have Ernest. And Demon Ernest. Um, definitely an interesting choice to not fight Ernest in the second chapter and then have him be, like, a major threat that we fight multiple times in the final chapter. Speaker Hartman and... Get rats, uh, present and died or toys, really cool. Uh, you know, here is Alyssa. You cannot tell me that's not Alyssa. That is definitely Alyssa. Like, it's clear that Alyssa is based on this character. Nets and <laughs> Hold on, hold on. I just realized that it's not, uh, I, I realized it's not just, uh, it's not just Estelle's, uh, it's not just, uh, Kia Khan there herself. She actually has, like, nicknames in my cases. Like, for example, I just realized, like, it's a chubby person! <laughs> he has the vest. There's Don, there's Don Marconi. It's a big... <laughs> oh, this menu's amazing. It's a big... No, no. One second. I didn't, we didn't finish seeing all the characters. It's Garcia. This was a fantastic boss battle. Just the idea that he has that one S-craft that could, like, delete anyone's health bar. Made him, you know, a very menacing threat without being overwhelming, especially for like a, a mid game aim boss. Then we have now Chow Lee. Then we have Ren, <laughs> you know, our agent of chaos. There's Tilica and Lecter. Really cool to see Lecter in this game. Wait, 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 wait. Lecter's outfit. Okay, never mind. I thought I saw something. There's Harold. Sophia. And Colin, and of course, Meister Yorg, who we saw for that uh, brief moment after that uh, secret side quest. All right, so that's... Man, there's a lot of artwork for this game. I really like the character portion of this game. Like, like this might be a hot take. I like the hand-drawn character port... Not the hand-drawn. I like these, like, anime-style character portraits better than the 3D model character portraits in Trails of Cold Steel. I just think they're... I just think, like, they add a whole new dimension to each of the characters. And it was really cool to see this here. 
I mean, I understand they want to go with a different stylistic choice for Shells of Cold Steel. I just like this better, personally. These are all really, really equal bits of artwork as well. Okay. Now, what do you mean mini games? Well, either way, this is, it's cool to see their extras here. Dude, it's, it's, well, it's just like, I think of it as like, it takes more effort to draw all those different animations than it does to just have a 3D model that you just slightly alter here or there. There's less style and more cost. That That's true. It would have cost less to do it with the 3D models. I just think like, you know, all else being equal, I much prefer the, the anime uh, character portraits. But yeah, that's just my opinion. Anyway, all in all, fantastic game. Really, really enjoy playing this, and I look forward to challenge running Trails uh, to Azura in the future. But for now, our next challenge run on Thursday, it, we're going to be ch challenge running uh, Portal Stories ML. We're going to be trying to complete the game as few portals as possible, and again, because I am not the best at like all the different glitches that exist in Portal, we're going to be having two separate counters. One will be proven, which is when I demonstrate that you can do a certain step at least one time. And the other will be theoretical, where I assess a level and I cite different glitches that I've seen on YouTube and the, the speedrunning wiki for Portal 2 as evidence that you could theoretically get the portals down. We'll have two separate towers that way. And yeah, very much looking forward to playing it. I've heard very, very good things about Portal Stories, Mel. After that, I'll of course uh, hold a poll for to see whether or not we challenge run uh, Sekiro or... Uh, or uh, see us stars, and then after that, who knows? Will we will we jump back into uh, Trails to Azura after see us stars, or slash Sekiro, or will we do some other game after that? Only time will tell. But yeah, uh, Spotchip says thanks for the stream. Glad you liked the game. Thanks, Spotchip. I really do. I really did like the game. I also appreciate uh, all the. I also appreciate all the uh, info and fun facts you gave throughout the, the challenge run, Spectre. It was really insightful. It, it gave me a lot, a much, a, even more appreciation for the world building that Neon Falcon does than I already had. And I also liked, um, you also gave some really great advice for certain sections, like, oh, you should, just don't stand there, bad things might happen. But like, I, I, I appreciate that, and I appreciate it. Hits all the other tips about like when I was asking like okay not spoilery like if I go forward here will it be like a point of no return and you'd be like yeah and like okay then that means that's I think like one of the reasons I actually did like all the trap like the super trap chest before uh, you know before completing chapter four was because you mentioned hey don't finish this chapter yet uh, don't don't go down that hallway if you do you won't be able to possibly finish that stuff. Jay says, you really want to play Trails now, but you got such a backlog games as is. Fair. Fair. Um, all right, Jay, so given what you've seen so far, do you think you'd start with Trails from Zero or Trails of Cold Steel? I'm, I'm kind of curious with that because I, I, I'm not sure. Actually, I don't think you were here for Trails of Cold Steel. You know, I had 10 counting games to your backlog. Listen, I think these games are beautifully put together but they also take a long time to complete and you know for me that's a positive because i feel like i really get to sink my teeth into these games so to, uh, so to speak but for others who might not have as much time or like may only have little bits of time here or there it might be a bit more to ask but i mean another thing that's nice about games like this is unless you're like a like a really d major boss battle for the most part it's a lot like reading a book you just kind of read a few pages here and there and then get back to it when you you have the time but yeah all in all, I love this game. I love the characters, love the music, love the gameplay design choices, love the story, love the themes. Uh, Jay says, Coldfield, most times you feel you'll appreciate this better if you play through is in Fester Mind. That's a fair point. All right, and I'll say this. Trails of Cold Steel is a good game, and I really, really love Class 7, and I love the stories. I'll be curious to see, uh, Jay, which, um, which character you end up shipping with Reen, because we, we all know that's for me, it's tell of, uh, but everyone's different. And, you know, there's some genuine arguments to be made, made there. And yeah, I'll also be curious to see which character you like the most out of Class 7. I mean, for me personally, out of Class 7, if we're not including Reen, it's probably Fee. Just because Fee is a Fee's hilarious. She has great character development. She's a really, really useful character on the battlefield V is like V is basically just become a meme on my channel like I would see like I would say like the fact that's 
this guy has the best starting place and played them in release order but if you're starting arts at the end of the play the order doesn't matter that's fair and i mean after seeing I'll, I'll i'll say this as well after seeing just how cool estelle and joshua are and all their hints just like how when i saw the intermission it got me curious in trails of cold steel 2 it got me curious about this game uh, seeing Estelle and Joshua here got me really curious about the liberal arc. So there will come a time at some point when we challenge Run Trails in the Sky and we will get to see Estelle. I mean, just for what I see from Estelle, she seems like a very unusual sort of protagonist. Like some of the stuff she said just not only was it ridiculously funny, but also seemed kind of out of left field for a hero character. So definitely very, very interested to see uh, what that's what that's like. You got six uh, Final Fantasy games. Live alive, live alive, near replicant. Hades and Elder Rain in line. After that, you'll start trails. Fair enough. Fair enough. But yeah, all in all, very well done. Very much looking forward to it. And yeah, we'll pick up with Portal Stories Mail on Thursday. So, if you're watching from Twitch, feel free to stick around for a raid. But if you're watching on YouTube and you know what you saw, please consider subscribing on YouTube. It's free to subscribe on YouTube. Always change your mind later, and you can always. That's right, which I support. You're watching YouTube. I have a moment today night. And for you all here on Twitch, thank you all so much for being here. Here, it was a lot of fun to chat with you all during this challenge run. Whether we're sharing memes or chatting about the story or trying or trying to come up with different strategies for really difficult uh, boss battle encounters. I mean, heck, I mean, if we're looking at like the death counter, I I think the death counter surpasses Trails of Cold Steel, well, Steel <laughs> Two even, and Trails of Cold Steel One as well. Like it, we we had a lot of deaths this uh for for a trails game this uh challenge round. I think that's a good thing because it shows just how much more difficult this run was. But anyway, oh no 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 game. But yeah, thank you all from the no offense, but you kind of wish you died eight more times. <laughs> yeah, that would have been funny. Fair enough, fair enough. But hey, Smuck, remember, like, y you've told me that you think Trails in the Sky is, like, the Trails in the Sky trilogy is probably even harder than this game, so there's always a chance. And Trails to Azure, if it's anything like Trails of, of Cold Steel 2 was, might even be harder, so who knows? But then, thank you all from the bottom of my heart for, for being here and interacting with the stream. It really, really, I really, really, really do appreciate each and every one of you. I hope you're all doing well. And I hope you all have an amazing rest of your week. So, uh, good night, everyone, and see you. See you for Portal Stories Mel.